Okay, that will not be an abrupt transition. Welcome to another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles. The Great Confusion, an alt game set in my bizarre little world of Omatia, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign. I'm Mark, the Encaffeinated One. I am your host, the GM, and generally responsible for a lot of the mistakes that get made. But that's okay. They're interesting mistakes, I hope. I have with me my usual bevy of players, starting on my left. Uh, my name is Pat. I am playing Silas Marsh, the uh, warlock illusionist. I am Annie, uh, and I play a, a uh, human rogue. I am Marie, playing Annie the human rogue. streams. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half-orc cleric. All right. Thank you very again for joining us at our slightly modified time. Um, I can't say that this will be the permanent time because I can't say anything permanently. I can't even say this broadcast will continue permanently just because uh, it seems to break up mightily on uh, Twitch. Uh, but you can also catch the YouTube replays, which hopefully have been reconstructed successfully on uh, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. If you're watching it there, you can watch live on Sundays, generally at 2.30 Atlantic at uh, uh, twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. A little recap before we jump into tonight's session. The attack on Ilthvater continued. The raging storm filled the sky with clouds and lightning hiding the stars and the sun. Heavy rain pounded on the inlet, turning the modest dirt streets into mud and making the cobblestone streets slick. As the group rebuffed Oxia and her giant turtle, they faced a decision, head toward where the four-armed gigantic sea devil had gone or where the living water elementals charged. In the end, in part due to the fact that they'd seen Gaetano racing in one direction, they decided to go to the other, away from the Temple of Ignis, this way, they knew, was defended only by the city guard, at the best, who might not be enough in the face of the elementals. They ran to the edge of town and found a street that appeared to be the center of the fighting. Villagers and guards faced off against two gigantic turbulent water elementals, and numerous lesser sea devils crashed into buildings, apparently searching for something. The fight was desperate, with the group joining the guards trying to defend themselves and giving time for the civilians to get away. Annie escorted a tra traumatized woman away from the battle to safety. Just as all seemed lost, Captain Verendel also joined the battle, riding in on their brown Morgan horse with a glowing sword. They stopped briefly to loan their glowing dagger to Annie. The fight continued for a few moments longer. Silas managed to convince one of the sea devils to drop the bundle it had stolen from within one of the houses. The luck of the few guards that remained, though, ran out. Just then... There was a very loud explosion, a bright flash of light on the other side of town, a rumble of thunder echoing across the streets. Then, for a moment, things were calm, although the rain persisted and the clouds were thick. But the red glow that had come from across the town dimmed, and a long, low, tremendous horn sounded, echoing along the streets. Uh, just a couple of notes. Uh, Annie, you should find in your log on Roll20 a listing for the description of Vice, which is the dagger that Captain Verendal loaned you. It is a magic dagger. It has a couple of features that you might want to take into account. As we return back to the fighting in the streets... Uh, we continue. It is actually Annie's turn. If you want to try to jump right into the to the battle, Let's see if I can. Cool. Ooh, that that's interesting. Um, uh -uh. that means Captain Verdendale knew what we were up to at that zone of truth. Um, do 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 do. Well, I now have something that I can do. So. Uh, I will come share a space with the spiritual weapon. Um, shit, I forgot how few hit points I had. <laughs> um, 
and I, oh, there we go, uh, accidentally changed my hit points. Um, I will make an attack with the dagger. Let's plus six, uh, I don't trust you. Maybe, well, that's a uh, 21 to hit. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that definitely hits. <clears throat> okay. And so it is a D4, fourth damage. That's on top of normal um, dagger damage, which is oh, a D6 plus your that's on. That's on top of that. Okay, yes. cool. Um, and then sneak attack because people are around it. That is four, six, uh, four force damage, and then two, uh, two damage for the dagger, and the uh, nine for sneak attack, plus four. So nine, 10, 11, 15, 19 damage. Okay. As you wield this dagger, and its light doesn't seem to glow any brighter than before, but there's so little light out here, it provides a sort of slashing beacon. You dip in and weave around the fiery hammer which spins overhead. I am below half my hit points, so another d4. Another d4 on top. Another one. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, didn't see that part. No, that's fine. It's a new, it's a new weapon for you. Uh, as you uh, duck and weave, you wait for that moment, that opening. This thing is surrounded by your allies on all sides. On the far side, the guard trying to hem it in. It now seems to have reacted to that horn overhead. And you can see it starting to turn and twist as though moving away. But as you do, you dive inward, taking that dagger, thrusting upward, and just kind of angle it in the right way. How do you kill this thing? I hit it like it, it it's tried to swallow me a few times, so I like flash it, like fl kind of flailing, um, but with confidence. <laughs> flailing with confidence. I like it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as you uh, kind of angle the knife in the right way and it sort of spins itself and seems to cut itself almost against the knife. Half of it, half of your strength is just holding it in the right place, but knowing that it is uh, uh, confused, it severs those those bonds it has to the terrestrial plane, and the water falls down uh, into a large splash, soaking the, the cobblestones below. We really finally killed the thing, guys. <laughs> you guys are actually a lot closer than I remember when I looked that up and went, "Oh, oh dear, okay." But now come kill the other one. <laughs> yep. Uh, um, and then that was 25 feet. So I will stand here. Um, and where's the closest guy? Uh, I will... I will... Dash is my bonus action. Uh, and go to here. You see one of the uh, civilians kind of piled in a slump that was killed earlier by the sea devil. You would have noticed in the hallway uh, as you're passing by that there is a sea devil that is kind of tucked into that alleyway right beside. Yep. Okay. I don't have the hit point to engage alone. <laughs> um, also, I do think Captain Verandell, that, that that's a sweet weapon. As I'm... <laughs> <laughs> it's called Vice, and I'm glad it suits you, I think. Um, the words are lost in the heavy rainfall around you. Uh, moving forward. I did get a beep. Oh, hey, welcome Link Leopard to the, or Link Leopard into the chat room. <laughs> uh, as you uh, charge forward into the rain, this, this elemental having 
fallen down behind you. You look over towards the the ongoing battle, the other uh, water elemental seeming having uh, had a chance to uh, move through one guard and is moving in. You kind of catch just the edge of the doors of this uh, twin doors right here to an outhouse that you recognize as the water elemental dives forward uh, and out uh, pouring in through the door and almost simultaneously the out stumbles the two uh, who you'd seen once before, this pair of twin uh, rogues who, uh, who you'd met at, a, at another temple a long time ago. Uh, a couple of ones that were accompanying the shadows forces. But the water elemental dives in through the doors and pours itself into the outhouse and is out of sight. Oh, uh, you might want to move the map just because uh, nobody could see that. Oh, there we go. Thank you very much. The danger of having two maps. All right. Hopefully that's visible now. Silly turn order things in the way. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. All right. Uh, and that was the elemental's turn. Silas. Uh, there's not much Silas can do, so he's going to step over the guard who he's currently under uh, and uh, go full defensive. Okay, standing on defense for this this uh, this down fellow. Yep. All right, then. Uh, what I will do is... Uh, there. Uh, the Sea Devils. Let's see, the one right in front of you uh, is going to attempt. Uh, where are we here? Um, actually, make an intuition check, or an insight check, I should say, uh, Silas, because you're right there. Three. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, you see the, uh, the, the sea devil who was intent on, on clawing and destroying this person at your foot, at your feet, hesitate for a moment and then launch at you, uh, attempting anyway. Let's see. Uh, it's going to be uh, one claw attack. At disadvantage. At disadvantage. It does not hit. And then, uh, snarls at you, hisses and tries for a bite. At disadvantage, hey. more advantage. Either way, it failed. Uh, so yes, it attempts to slash at the... Uh, having no success, uh, it is going to try to run away. Uh, you will have an attack of opportunity as it tries to, to leave you alone. Kill it! Hmm. Um... I reach out with his staff and try to trip it. Okay. That's not a normal thing, but uh, Let's make yeah, that he's a not grab attack then. So it'd be athletics or acrobatics. Versus, I'll say it's athletics in this case. Eleven. Make a sweep for its leg. Oh, <laughs> wow! That was a really bad wow. pair of rolls. Uh, as it uh, attempts to get away and is tripped and falls over. Uh, let's see. Uh, however. Uh, yeah, it can still try to uh, just get back up and keep moving, but yeah, so it, slower. Yeah, it, so it, it actually uh, will... Oops, wrong button. It, didn't, it did die from the attempt. No. Uh, it does get back up to its feet. Let's try to remember what their movement is. Okay, so... It only manages to get a few feet away from you as it kind of stumbles, uh, hisses over its shoulder, but can, it seems intent on running away. Uh, this one. Let's see. Runs to that point. Sees Annie on one side, sees the guard and a whole bunch of other people on the other. Uh, sees its friend running away. Runs to the other side of the street, avoiding Annie, and then proceeds to try to sprint down the, yeah, down the street. I don't know if there are any others out here. 
Oh yeah, this guy. Uh, let's see. My map is screwing up on me here. Uh, this one. Gets to there, realizes that the guard in his way, proceeds to he to hoof it down the street, but the guard will get a chance to attack. I don't have. Is he holding the package? Or did he pick it back up or no? Uh, he did not pick up the package again. All right, good. Uh, oh, that uh, that hits. Good job, guard. Ooh, takes a big chunk out of him as he passes by. Still, uh, the, the guard sort of does a, a half swing at the corner, uh, catching the sea devil on the back of the leg, causing it to kind of tear up against his uh, his uh, sword, I think he was carrying? Yes, his sword. Uh, it's been a little while, pardon me. Uh, that is the sea devil's turn, I think. I don't think I have any more hiding in this particular spot. Uh, Captain Verandel, still on board the horse, uh, directs the horse through and around the water elemental and catches up to the creature. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, actually, I don't think he can roll low enough. Uh, yeah, easily catching up to the creature and with a, a brilliant slash, downward slash of this, this slightly glowing sword, uh, cuts it across the, the shoulder and it collides into the ground. It is no more. Uh, that guy is no more as well. Um, what does Graveler do? The civilians have all kind of fled or are dead. Which He's going know. to shuffle towards the sea devil that's trying to run away. He's probably not going to catch him, but... He can take his action to also sprint. So he can right, double, his, double his movement. Speed shuffle. Yeah, he's kind of slow to begin with, but... I think that's as far as you can get. <laughs> okay. I uh, kind of... Clong, 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 kind of walking along. Medric. I will also sprint towards the sea devil. Yeah. How, how does that thing work again? Uh, oh, uh, Q as you're moving. Pick up and lift your yeah. icon and hit Q. It'll leave a trace behind, and you can get a if you have to go around things as well. Damn it. <laughs> it's okay. Is it working for you? It's barely. Oh, yeah, almost. Actually, I'll stop next to Silas. Okay. Because he's not looking good. <laughs> but that was my movement. And this virtual weapon will... Yeah, Silas is holding his ribs currently. Yeah. This virtual weapon will move as far as possible. I don't think it can sprint, though. Nope. Okay. The guard looks up to uh, Captain Verandel, who uh, points the sword down towards the uh, sea devils uh, and just simply shouts, Run them down! And he's going to try to do that. And he will catch up to them. Actually, he was able to get just ahead of them. So he's kind of running to, and then kind of turns, holding his sword out, ready to fight. Any. Sorry, chewing. <laughs> um. Uh, 
I'm gonna go here and swing the dagger. Has this one lost hit points? Yes, it has. Oh, uh, that's a 16 to hit. Ooh, that's a hit. Um, there's a guard, so I do have a... Yep, and he's standing there basically getting in their way, attracting their attention. Perfect for a rogue to sneak up from behind. Yeah. That's a three, six. <laughs> Rolled th roll threes on all of my D4s. Uh, that's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Nice. 18. Oh. Uh, as you slice over towards it, you catch it in the back of the leg where it was already wounded somewhat by the other guard. Actually, no, sorry, it's a different one. This one is not wounded across the leg. But it was slightly wounded, and it is hanging on for dear life. Now aware of you, but just barely alive. Cool. Um, I am hoping to have been able to, like, scoot them in a way to give advantage to the next hit. Okay. With Definitely. my section. Definitely. Make everybody else aware. <laughs> And that is my turn. All right. You do not see the, the water elemental. Silas. This creature that you it's tripped is, is nearly dead. Yep, but so is the guard that I'm standing over. So I am going to uh, try to stabilize him. Okay. That's a medicine check. Nice. Hey. Nice. Nice. You reach down, and he's been stabbed pretty thoroughly, but you kind of bunch up the clothing around it. Uh, he's got a bare amount of consciousness, but his eyes aren't really focusing on anything. You take his hand and kind of have him press down on the spot where the blood is coming out, and he seems to know. You get the impression this is not the first wound he's taken, but this is probably the closest to fatal it's ever been. Yeah, I kind of just, just hold on. We'll We'll get you some help. Uh, nods mutely. And there we go. Um, the fight going on there. Uh, yeah, Silas is going to move over to the person that gets skewered over there. And uh, do they appear to be dead or still breathing? They don't appear to be moving, but you'd have to take a closer look to really figure that out, if they're alive or dead. They're certainly not around and and, uh, and moving happily, let's put it that way. Okay, that's all Silas has got. Okay. The Sea Devils. Uh, this one that you just attacked, Annie, uh, hisses, spins around, and attempts to claw at thee, because that hurt a lot. Yeah, it did. Uh, let's see. I wouldn't survive that hit. Does a 15 hit? Meets. Meets, beats. So that's six points, including two acid. Six in total. Uh, and we'll attempt to bite out at you as well. Oof. I'm down. As it successfully clamps down on your shoulder and bites, you feel this injection of, of pain and venom just beneath the skin. And with that, with the heavy water pounding overhead, all the sound goes muted as you collapse into a pile. The other one's taking on the guard that's there. Uh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, that's nasty. Uh, as it claws forward, eight, ooh, not looking good. Uh, it uh, buries its its uh, claw into the guard's uh, stomach, and uh, Medric, you can see from where you are that the the blow was deep, and it pulls back out. You feel like it it may have pulled a rib out when it pulled its hand back out. Uh, the guard, who wasn't looking great, is now looking desperate as it tries to bite down on him. God damn. Unfortunately, uh, somewhat similar to what, what happened to Annie just seconds ago, it bites down on the guard's shoulder. 
and in a, in a loud, angry cry, he goes down and then immediately pops back up. His eyes open and flame yeah. with <laughs> anger as the orcish rage fires from within him and he stands wearily to his seat, the, uh, the sea devil having already kind of forgotten him, already tasted his flesh, thought he had victory, and the guard staggers back to his feet. There's a cry from down the street, and Verandel rides, spurs his horse, rides down, stands more or less over Annie at this particular point, and swings down with his other sword. Virtue. It is, in fact, called Virtue. Uh, however, uh, maybe because he had to uh, navigate the horse in that direction, the first swing goes wide, as does the second swing. Oh, that's, that's bad luck. That's what that is. Uh, let's see. They are on their turn. Graveler. What is Graveler's intelligence? I don't know. Let's find out. Should have it here somewhere. Eleven. Okay. Then Graveler understood what Annie was getting at when she said it's 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 poised to be uh, to be attacked, which means it would get advantage against this particular one. If it can get there. <laughs> if, if it can get there, yes. I think it's a little bit outside of its its range, unfortunately. Yeah. It will go as close as possible, though, and hold an action. If anybody comes near it, it's going to get... Well, if any of the sea devils come near it, they're going to get smacked. Okay. Medric, you see Annie go down in front of you, just mere feet away from a nasty bite. The creature tries to move closer, but the big horse is in its way. What do you do? Your wounds at level one. You reach out, mindful of the horse's uh, hooves, grab hold of Annie. Ah. Eh. Well, better than dead, I suppose. That is always a relative suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> better than dead. Uh... I cannot reach my token because of Medrix. Oh, sorry. No, because actually, of Verandel. It's, it's actually Verandel. Just a second. There you go. You open your eyes. You see a Horse. horse's prey cards. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. You do feel a warm hand on your shoulder, though, uh, coming from the flaming fingers of Medric. Let's see. All the while, I hope I don't get, like, kicked by the horse for making fire next to its rear end. <laughs> you see uh, these two uh, labeled as Flip and Flack. So you may recall, as I mentioned, from the, the Water Temple. Uh, yeah. They were the part of the group that was assaulting the Water Temple. They look at each oh, other. Oh, yeah. Shrug and Flip throws a dagger at the... Uh, Sea Devil in front of Annie. I don't have his sheet, so I'm just going to guess. Wow, and it just goes flying on by. These guys are not rolling well. Uh, there's a snicker from his twin brother who does the same. And it also misses. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Ha, uh, <laughs> ha, watch this. Oh. Uh, there's a, a mutual... Uh, <laughs> kind of poking fun at each other and then the two of them just simply run away they run down the alleyway uh, actually sorry flip had uh, advantage so that would have been eight and nine so he still didn't hit but flax oh my god eight nine and ten <laughs> beautiful my rolls have been ten nine eight nine ten 
still misses pretty badly, and the two of them still take off running. And they're gone within an instant. Uh, the guard that's there, back on his feet unsteadily, uh, takes a look between uh, the one which is being assaulted currently by his captain and also had just taken down Annie, but the one that had faced off against him, he turns towards it, and let's see if he does some, somewhat better. Okay. Very Apparently, good. it's only certain key characters, which, uh, yeah, that's just weird. All right. Uh, oof. He must live. And it's a nasty, a nasty a strike. Uh, and a second strike from him, that's not the right roll. Second strike also hits. Which guard is that? This is the, the uh, orc guard, the one that just went down and came back up. Okay. Uh, and then all right, the guards all go together. Gotcha. Yeah, they all do on the same initiative. The, that's the only one that's currently active. This one is basically holding his guts together at this point. All right. Um, but he manages to take a pretty big chunk out of it. You can, he swim, swings kind of halfway as he's standing up again uh, and then takes another uh, swing kind of down on the shoulder Catching the guys, catching the attention of the uh, sea devil as well, however. Uh, Annie, you breathe well, once more, but you heard uh, I will, like, scoot over and stand up. <laughs> okay. Uh, and take a swing at the guy in front of me. Uh, it is uh, another 16. That's a hit. So, dagger... Me damage, them damage. He has one hit point. <laughs> so, he gone. It, is, it is very effective. It is very, very effective. I rolled a bunch of ones. Uh, I rolled four ones and a six. Well, you only so. one of those ones. Uh, but you quite satisfyingly uh, uh, see the dagger kind of slice into a, in him as he kind of wavers a little bit and then just sort of slinks down in place. Uh, spent finally but not looking Beautiful. well I mean it's hard to say if he looks unhappy about it but you haven't known um, enough to know I'm going to holding where I was hit earlier uh, be like the, try to hit them in the side it works really good and try to give advantage to I'm pointing at it but you guys can't see what I'm pointing at the other guy <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to move the spiritual weapon in my previous turn. Can I do that now? <laughs> sure. It's not going to get close enough to attack, I think, anyway, this time. Yeah. But next round, it might. Yep. I think it can get to there. It only moves 20, I think. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty, okay. it's pretty short. All right. You don't see that one. Otherwise, it would be like so OP. <laughs> Silas, you your heart maybe skipped a beat as you saw Annie fall, but Medrick was right there to right her again. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I am going to check and attempt to stabilize the civilian on the ground. Okay, medicine check. Wow. 21, natural 20. Nice. As you look down on him, you're thinking, oh, no, I think he's gone. His skin is a little bit gray. Uh, but you put your hand to the side of his face. There's a little bit of, of heat there, not much. Um, and then when you put your fingers in towards the, towards the wound, you notice he's still bleeding. His heart is still pumping. He still has a moment of life in him and you catch him at that moment, saving his life. Yay. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything. If you close it to see he's Silas. 15, 30, eh, no, I'll go hide behind Graveler. Mm. <laughs> okay. It's hard to hide behind him. He's only about uh, four feet tall, I think, but. I crouch down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's it. Okay. The remaining sea devil, at first intent on this guard, sees now that the other companion it had is dead and seems to think twice about it and starts to sprint down. The guard will get a chance. <laughs> With advantage, actually. Oh, uh, to attempt to cut this guy down as he leaves. 
Oh. Wow. Okay, with advantage, still. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. I haven't rolled that bad in a long time. Uh, it does manage to, to uh, catch him on the uh, kind of swinging, and then kind of you you feel any, like, his his arm was going to reach for the shoulder. And the last moment you see his arm shift downward, trying to catch him across the, the uh, back, kind of the same area you had indicated. And sure enough, it draws significant blood, uh, and uh, he uh, cuts at him. However, the sea devil while hissing, does manage to, to get further away. Um, at this point, however, it's Varendel's turn. And seeing that you're no longer underfoot, charges the horse forward towards the Sea Devil. They're actually slightly off the map, but the horse can easily catch up to... Uh, Cut him down! ...to that. And you can see him... Hmm. Yeah, actually... He's uh, spurring on the horse to ride it straight over him. Let's see if that strikes. Unfortunately, it goes by him. We'll swing around for one more attack with the uh, the, the uh, sword. What the? I have never rolled that many twos and threes before. <laughs> a couple of fours and a five. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Verandel. I'm going to uh, to. Uh, ellipsis this for the moment because the uh, the uh, flaming hammer can't catch up to him and most of you are engaged. I'm going to ellipsis this that Captain Verandel does eventually harry this one down to the ground because, geez. <laughs> so, backs up prove it. I will do two more attacks. Nah, I don't want to waste any time. So. 23. That was definitely a hit. I uh, just kind of, I because now I want to know. That would have, <laughs> that would have taken him out. Uh, yeah. Oh, actually. Don't worry, Verndell. You'll eventually do it. He, he can actually press the attack this round. I forgot he has that ability. Um, so he would actually take the extra attack and lo and behold, it finally hit. Anyway, the street goes silent. One of you at some point probably checks where the the water elemental went and finds the chamber empty. It is indeed another public um, water closet, and it doesn't take a huge leap to imagine that this water elemental flushed itself down the toilet. If it came back up, though, would it be doing poison damage? It, it might be doing solid damage, depending on what it finds down there. <laughs> Stench damage. <laughs> Acid damage? There used to be a spell for that, actually. Um, I check on that last guard that's down. It's been a few rounds, so he might not be aidable, but uh, Silas will try his best while everyone else is uh, in Another one, the other. one that's next to me? Uh, there's, there's someone... <laughs> this one over here. He was, like, taken down, like, probably four or five rounds ago, at least. Yeah, I'm going to roll... Uh... There's two. Not two good ones. Three. That's three. Yeah. Uh, when you reach down to try to stabilize his wounds, you find that he's no longer bleeding, uh, but he is not dead. Shallow breath, but not dead. That's good because I rolled a crap medicine check. Yeah, you couldn't do anything about it, but thankfully you didn't have to. I'll stabilize him. Captain Verandell, after running down that last sea devil, seems uh, you can see down the street curves and races down another street towards uh, another central part of the city. I'm not sure where he's gone to. Yeah, he had self-stabilized anyways. Oh, okay. That's why it was good, because uh, I wouldn't have succeeded. So I would like to go to the lady that I was hoping. I'll go find the package that the uh, C-Double dropped, too. Okay, easily done. Mm. The lady's still sort of crouching oh. in that alleyway, um, looking fearful. I believe you gave her one of your daggers, uh, which she's kind of holding, pointing out away from her. Um, it would just be a cheap dagger, so I'm just going to tell her, run home, lock yourself in your home, do not leave until 
tomorrow. Uh, she kind of. What if she lives on the other side of town. <laughs> very eyes wide um a little bit of makeup that she had earlier in the evening is now washed down her face kind of streaking down across her face Uh, she's utterly soaked because the rain continues to pour down on her um she kind of blinks up at you nodding as you speak and then in a very small voice thank you and latches forward onto you giving you a, a very quick but very intense hug uh and then dashes off into the night Check your pockets. I do. You have pockets with things in them. Cool. Um, Medrick, you go over to the pile. It looks like it's a, a, a carpet that's been wrapped around something. And you, how do you approach this? It'll just, it's still on the floor, so I won't pick it up right yet. Although I'm assuming it's not super dangerous because the sea devil had it in, in its hands. I'll just take off one corner of the carpet. Okay. Do you see anything? Do you have night vision? I got dark vision, yeah. Okay, yeah. I think he's the only one of us that does. It's very, very dim out here. It's actually almost... I do too. Almost by your own own light, though, by your own sort of semi-glow. It flashes uh, uh, reflective on the surface. You pull back the, the carpet... It looks like yeah, like a second corner. Yeah. What? Okay. It looks like uh, a bundle about about a foot and a half long, um, kind of bulges in the middle. You realize quickly that 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 flash is really this black surface, which is smooth and shiny and and uh, and um, probably glazed stone. And you pull back the 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 carpet to see a very fine ebony black vase there are gems small ones uh, about the size of your pinky fingernail uh, that have been embedded in a ring around the center of the vase of the vase okay does that have any uh, significance like religious wise or is it just a fancy vase that jerk was trying to steal from somebody I mean make a religion roll right I need my character sheet. Almost. I need a mouse. I do not have space for a mouse. Okay. Uh, you look at it and you kind of think, like, you know, what is, what would this mean to me? And it's a nice looking vase. Um, it doesn't have any particular religious significance to you. And and thinking about it, I mean, it, it it's just a vase doesn't seem to be all that fancy. I mean, it's probably an expensive one. This is probably a, a hundred gold, 120 gold worth. It's okay. kind of weird though. Why would it grab that? And yeah. why would it wrap it up so tenderly? I'll look at, and the sea devil was taking it out of that door that I'm standing in front of. Mm-hmm. The door's kind of smashed open a bit. Okay, I'll walk in. Okay. See if the owner of the house is there. Um, It's a really small room. (laughs) It is a very small room. Um, You do notice, though, as you look around this this small room, there was somebody here. I don't have Mm -hmm. the thing on the map there, but there is a a body there, someone who was surprised by the creature uh, and killed, uh, actually, in their bed. Uh, Looks like a, a, a young... Uh, well, not young, 30s. Everybody's young to me now. Uh, <laughs> young man. Um, look around the room and it's it's easy to see that this was uh, someone who um, probably uh, was a painter. There's a stock of, of paint supplies in one corner. A few things for mixing different co- colors of paint. But you notice a tremendous amount of soot over by the uh, large fireplace. I'll go check that out a little closer. Okay. As you look, you can see that the fireplace has been broken through in the back. Um, and you realize that this fireplace, as part of the way this building works, uh, is shared with the apartment next door. And so the actual um, chimney, while in the middle of the building, actually serves two different faces. And the the relatively cheap uh, masonry has been 
push through. There was no fire burning at this particular case. Okay. You can easily pass through can the I... apartment beside if you want. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. Okay. Coming in here, you see a room which has largely been ransacked. Uh, it looks like there are a few books that were torn off of the, the, the shelves. There's a, 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 an entirety of a kitchen there where all the pots and pans have been pulled off of the, or out of the uh, drawers and, and out of the shelves. The room was ransacked. Um, you will find another uh, person, this time an older woman, uh, who has also been killed uh, probably by the sea devil, uh, judging from the large bite and the nasty-looking gashes across her, her uh, body. Looks like uh, a cook of some kind. There's a lot more food and a lot more things in here, but nothing of any particular wealth or value. So the stairs over down in the uh, southwest. I'll go up the stairs. I'll check out this room, too. I'm yeah, assuming there's a, a door that hangs uh, loosely between the two of them, but yeah, uh, it looks like it's a uh, storefront. There are numerous mm -hmm. shelves there with uh, um, prepared oils and uh, spices and supplies. Looks like it was probably someone who sold food or sold, uh, uh, you know, cooked goods. You see some some uh, knocked over, half chewed, uh, baked. Uh, bread and different things on the on the ground. It took a sample out of a bunch of things, but didn't seem to really care about most of it. Um, if there's no more bodies downstairs, I'll check the upstairs. Okay, you head upstairs and find there are three rooms upstairs. I don't have this on the map here because I can't really change layers very easily, and I don't have it written anyway. But uh, mm -hmm. you find three uh, bedrooms, or sorry, four bedrooms upstairs. Looks like this place was also being used as sort of a bed and breakfast. Um, you do find uh, two people uh, killed in their room. One, the door is still locked. And when you knock on the door, a timid voice from inside, a, a, a girl's voice, uh, yells out, Go away! And the third room, or the fourth room, rather, is probably uh, her room, and the other one is empty. They've all been ransacked, the ones that were open. You can see there are claw marks on the door, but the door seemed to have held in this case. I'll call out to the voice that's inside the locked door, or behind the locked door, rather. The sea devils are, are gone. You're safe now. The monsters are gone? Yes. Thank you. And there's a, 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 a sound of some wood moving from within, and you probably gather that the furniture has been pulled away from the door as well. It cracks open just a little bit, and you see are you a, okay? a, a young woman there looking terrified but otherwise not not wounded it was so scary i could hear it scratching everywhere did they say what they were looking for by any chance they didn't speak anything i understood just grunts and growls and whistles and howls Who they tried you? to make off with this and i'll show her the vase through the crack of the door do you know why they would take this vase only she kind of shrugs. It's pretty? It is. It's probably expensive. It's it's Maybe. a hefty kind of, uh, it probably uh, a baked stone which has been glazed. But that's about it. I, I don't know. It was in the hallway. And she kind of gestures over to one of the hallway. And you can see a, a table which was overturned. Uh, mm -hmm. and some flowers spread around the uh, floor. That's probably where it was, holding flowers. Okay. Do you live here? Yeah, I came in with one of the caravans. We're scheduled to come out soon, once we load up again. Is uh, I got bad news for you. Uh, and everybody else in this building didn't make it. Oh, no. No. And she starts to cry. I'm sorry. Kind of opens up the door, and uh, you can see this young woman dressed for a uh, bed in heavy night clothes. Um, they're uh, light blue uh, with little, little what are probably flowers. It's really hard to tell. Uh, they aren't really particularly well made. Um, but she kind of charges out of the room, charges towards you, and wraps her arms around you, crying into your shoulder. 
it hurts a bit because I think you've been wounded a couple of times. <laughs> I'm at six HP. I almost don't catch her. <laughs> she almost pulls me over. <laughs> no. uh, but she kind of buries herself into you. And uh, after a second or two, uh, kind of catching your breath a little bit, um, you feel her grab tighter and then say, you're, you're so warm. Do I still feel warm? Everything went kind of cold. Everything did go kind of cold, but you you don't notice it. Um, the yeah. fact that your skin tends to have a temperature hotter than everybody around you. The fact that it tends to glow a little bit in dim light. But she certainly notices. And maybe it's just because she's more closer to you than probably anyone else yeah. has been for a while. Um, and she kind it's, of looks... It's the light of darkness. Thank you. And she doesn't look like she's going to get let, let go anytime soon. What do you do? I'll just like wait a few seconds, like wrap my own, like wrap, wrap my arm around her gently. Like they yeah, there, it's okay type of thing. Even though like her family probably just died. So it's not okay. But I mean, you're alive. It's okay. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. Let's call it that. See what your calming abilities are like. Oof. Make it with advantage because she's she's kind of leaning into it literally, which is good because you were like, they're there. Your family's <laughs> probably dead. No, I shouldn't say that part. Um, I mean, they're just sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you kind of keenly at least move her away from looking into the other room where there's a couple of dead people right there. Um, after a moment or two, she calms down um, and at least a little bit. Um, and, you said uh, you were with that caravan? Yeah. We came in just a few days ago. We were waiting for a ship to deliver more goods so we could travel back to Pitajun. Do you remember what the name of the ship was? The Aaron. I'm wondering, like, or if the ship was the one that Gaetano mentioned. I forget the name of it. The Gaetano Errant ship Widow. was the Errant Widow. Yeah. Was it the Errant Widow by any chance? I think so. I wasn't really in charge of that part. Well, if that's the case, uh, we know somebody who was close to the captain of that ship. Uh, so you may still pick up supplies if your wagons aren't smashed. I should talk to the to the caravan masters and and everyone. She looks like she's about to to get back into crying. Um, she kind of looks over and does notice the uh, body in the other room next to hers and kind of flinches a little bit. I'm, I'm just going to go in my room for a while. I'll, I'll check on it when, when, when the sun comes up. And she backs away from you and kind right. of backs into her I'll room. Tell her, yeah, I'll tell her, like, stay safe, lock the door, and I'll check up on you tomorrow morning or in the near future. You get the impression there's no real lock on these doors, but she yeah. does. you do hear the sound of, of uh, heavy wood piling up against the door once more. And before she retreats into her room, I'll let her know that, well, A, I'll check up on her, and B, that no matter what happens, if this place isn't safe and she has to stay somewhere else, then perhaps the Temple of Ignis can accommodate her. Thank you, Mr. Ignis. Medric. Follower of Ignis. Thank you, Medric. Glad to help. And I'll make Thank my you, way. <laughs> I'll make a note of the address of the place. So, like, if I grab the vase and it turns out that it does have to some significance, we can always like, I don't know, bring it back to the guy's family who got killed. Okay, you you put a pin in your GPS and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, outside, Silas. These couple of guards are are semi-conscious now. You haven't seen the Captain Verandell again. Uh, well, Gravel looks like he's about to charge into the uh, building after uh, Medric, but seems uncertain. I ask him not to, but he doesn't obey me, so. Uh, uh, while I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on the, the guards and the civilian uh, for a bit as I check the bodies of the two uh, sea devils that are there. 
Okay. Uh, just to see if they had anything of note on them. And I'm going to be looking off in the distance to where the temple is, wondering, it's like, eh, something seems to be wrong. Lightning flashes occasionally overhead from the building that's right beside where Annie is. Um, you actually see a, 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 a partly um, somewhat older man. You can see graying, thinning hair, uh, wearing uh, a stained apron. Kind of open up the door timidly and look outside. Is it over? I don't think so. It probably is best to stay inside. Do you need anything? Uh, you don't, you don't happen to have any healing, do you? I've got, I, some, I've got some ale that's said to cure what ails you, but I don't think it's what you need. No, uh, thank you. Just, uh, just be safe. Uh, and I totter over to another, uh, sea devil and. Wait for Medrick to show back up. All right. I'd go back to where people are after sending the lady away. Okay. Yeah. I don't find anything. <laughs> There's not really much to find. Um, they yeah. don't seem to carry any sort of coin purse. Um, they have their own natural weapons. They're not even really wearing armor so much as just, uh, a, you know, tightly wrapped um essentially seaweed that's been turned into clothing at this point. Um, you do notice that uh, as you kind of look a little bit closer, there's a, a sticky, stinging sensation on the edges of your fingers, uh, and you realize that the, their, their bodies are kind of coated with this, this black ichor, uh, not entirely unlike what you'd seen uh, the large thing which held on to the globe before. It's almost like it's composed of a, of a, of a deader version of that, and you're also kind of thinking this is probably the source of why the wounds for many other people are much worse. Um, actually, sorry, yeah. you're not resistant to acid, though, are you? No. Yeah, so you take one point of damage, essentially, cumulatively, from poking uh, and fall over dead. I'm down to two now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, that'll teach you not to use gloves. Uh, yeah. The couple of guards that are there are checking, first of all, on Annie just because they don't know who you are, but you seem to be a surviving citizen. I'm sore. I've not been this sore in a very long time, but I should be okay. There was someone who went through a wall over there, though, and that concerns me a little bit. And what are you do planning on? You were thinking of the, the one you saw back there? Yeah, I remember you. Uh, it's, yeah, he disappeared. I think, right here, yeah. Uh, who went through a wall? The uh, the guard slaps you on the shoulder. Thankfully, not enough to actually wound you. Uh, holding in his own guts at this particular point. Thanks for the tip, lady. You knew right where they should get hit. Don't worry, we'll take care of this. And he kind of hobbles over first to his other to the other guard and speaks quietly. And you see him kind of grimly walking over to the other one, to the civilian, and then looking in the uh, the alleyway. He's barely holding his own guts in, but he still has his weapon drawn, and it looks like he's heading in that direction. Um, I'm assuming that Silas is there. Medrick has gone inside. Or has Medrick come back outside again? Yeah, I would have come back outside afterwards. Okay. With the vase in my hand. Yeah, once... Uh... I mean, once the civilian and the guards start to wake up, then Silas is going to feel more like moving to it, moving off and checking stuff. So. Well, the um, the barkeep you saw poke his head out before comes back out in a couple of minutes with a couple of younger uh, boys, and they proceed to haul the, the downed guards and the civilian into the bar to give them some shelter from the heavy rain. Good. The guard... Uh, you see pokes down that end of that alleyway. A few minutes later, comes back, though, saying, uh, basically, no sign of him. Ugly bastard got away. Any sign of a door or anything? There's plenty of doors in there. Most of them smashed through. I don't think I can mm. catch up to him. Well, 
You guys fought well. You should be proud. Not so bad yourself, miss. Now, I gotta see about this ale. He steps into the bar. So is the uh, bar the safe spot now? <laughs> yeah, these, these no, I'm just wondering there's if a, I should like tell the time. girl to like, head to the bar. It does seem to be safe, yes. Okay. And... Um. So I'll ask the guards to well, any any guards that aren't, aren't like looking like they're about to drop dead. There's really only the one guy who's not falling over the other half work. Like I'll instruct him to get the girl that's on top of the bed and breakfast to the bar to safety. Can do. And he kind of claps you on the shoulder. Uh, still it's kind of like, mostly it's holding it's his like, own. Okay, Sorry, what was that? As much as I feel like shit, I am really worried about Gaetano. He was on his own. And what was that horn? We need to... <laughs> Silas starts slowly hobbling off in the other direction. We need to check out the, the, other, the other side. You feel strong hands grab onto your shoulders as a graveler uh, kind of steadies you, seeing that you're kind of stumbling a little bit. Mm -hmm. then the kind of reaches over and grabs onto Annie's shoulder trying to hold her up and the third hand is reaching towards Medrick thank you and I thank like pat his head or what seems like his head you try to avoid the top of his head where his mouth actually is <laughs> but uh, more like the back part but trying to also avoid the eyes which are on the sides of his head um, how are we feeling horrible not good I don't think I've ever felt this shitty. I have. And I've used to it. I've had through some quite shitty things. So who looks the worst out of all of us? Me. Sure. Okay. I am at five. I am I at two. Six. <laughs> so Silas will get a healing word. Jeez, Medrick, you're you're better than the two of the others combined. Uh-huh. No, Silas is at six. Woo! And I'm out of spell. <laughs> so the three of you are going? I'm feeling hale and hearty now, so yes. <laughs> as true as I'm worried, so... Um, cause yeah, a uh, short rest is an hour, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We Hasn't don't have an hour since the battle started. Um, not quite. Okay. So, Just wondering how much time Graffler has left. Doesn't have a lot. Okay. Probably 10 minutes. At this mm -hmm. point. Um, you spend okay. most of the time moving around actually. But as Can you, you make it I... within 10 minutes. <laughs> No. Damn it. Okay. It took you, I think, 15 to 20 minutes to get to this side of town, and it's on the other side of town. So. Right. Um, I'm just going to bring up my map here. So we're over by, like, where the compass is, right? On the map? I'm going to bring up my map and find out. Oh, there we go. I've been having some weird problems with... Uh, with pop-ups in Roll20, so I may occasionally have to just swear and do something else. Uh, yes, you are on the eastern side of town, and the Temple of Ignis is closer to the western side of town. Okay. Is there a... Silas, do you know what the quickest way to get to the temple is from here? Uh, I imagine he would, so yeah, he'd, uh, he'd tell them what we have to do for that. There's a... let's, let's go to the temple and then go to Gaetano because the temple might have healing. Yes. Yeah. There's a, 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 a large route that runs mostly along the town. It doesn't run all the way to the Temple of Ignis, but it catches to another large route, which will take you across town. It's got to be a heck of a tree. Yes. 
Uh, as you make your way along, the rain continues to pour down. Looks like the thunder and lightning have calmed somewhat, but the clouds overhead are, are thick enough that whatever light there would be from celestial objects is still uh, closed away. Medric, being a follower of the sun god, you're not exactly in tune yet with all the motions of Ignis, but you do get the sense that by now Ignis has dropped below the horizon. He hadn't quite uh, been invisible when the storm rolled in, but now you feel that extra little bit of, of cool that uh, Ignis is no longer in direct view of, of the world. Um, yeah. As you make your way along, you see a lot of carnage. Um, about a half a dozen bodies of um, villagers, a few of the guards uh, along the way. What's unusual perhaps about them is that they don't look like they've just fallen there. If anything, they look like they've been carefully arranged off to the sides of the roads, um, carefully laid out their arms at their sides, all facing upward, lying down upon the ground. Uh, and Annie, something catches yes. your eye as you walk by one of them, and you realize that attached to the foot of one of them has his boot still on, but wrapped around the foot is what looks to be some small squarish metal, or sorry, wooden tag of some kind attached with a bit of string. I would like to grab that. Okay. You carefully Take a look. You realize it's actually two pieces of wood that have been that have been sewn together and then attached onto a string. Uh, and this is a, 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 a guard who has been clearly uh, killed by the by the uh, um, the sea devils. As you can see, the large gashes across his head and neck and down his uh, his body. One of his hands is is um, kind of curled in on itself as probably some parts of the arm were, were savaged by a bite and written in a very elegant handwriting on the inside uh, I should say actually probably burned in uh, is uh, the word study in common hmm. does this ring any bells for me or I mean the word study means something to you but the context doesn't make any sense do we see Annie looking at the body? Unless she's trying to hide it, I think that's pretty obvious. What have you found? I don't know. It seems out of place. Uh, I, I would like to search the rest of the guard, if that's possible. Sure. Um, the guard's uh, weapon looks like a simple sword sitting beside him. Uh, again, kind of arranged carefully. Um, not really carrying much on him. You find a small pouch. There's about uh, uh, three gold and ten silver inside. Probably his life savings. Who knows? Um, wearing simple clothing. Looks like it was... I rolled uh, anything. Uh, not exactly. There's not really anything being hidden on the body. Um, it was, as you look at it, though, it, it was clearly laid out this way. There's no way he could have died and perfectly laid down his sword at his side. Um, it even looks as though his clothing has been straightened somewhat, uh, even with the large gashes from the uh, claws in it. Uh, the hands have been folded across the uh, body. Uh, it looks as though... The, uh, the, the arm, which is, was bit, you can see a little bit of, of burn uh, around that, uh, probably from very the... Much, sorry? Very much posed. Posed or composed, maybe. Rather than leaving him in whatever sprawling position he died in, it's been carefully arranged. Clearly gone over, because the clothing is, is rearranged, but uh, the uh, pouch of gold is still still there, not been rifled. Um, you also notice that the eyes are closed, the chin has been closed. Looks kind of at peace. 
I'll look to see. I'll look uh, at, at other bodies nearby if I can see anything weird, really weird, like uh, that stand out. Yep. There's another uh, young woman across the street, arranged similarly. No weapon by her side. Uh, it's a young woman. Was probably in her twenties. Um, you are caught a little bit off guard because you realize that her throat was torn out, probably by a bite from that those nasty creatures. You find a, a similar. Uh, wooden card attached to one of her feet. She's barefoot, um, and it looks like her feet are are well used to being barefoot, built up calluses, that sort of thing. And inside this one, uh, you see stamp, uh, sorry, burned first in a very elegant handwriting, the word salvage, and below it, in a little bit more hurried and rushed and a little bit streaky ink, the words hands. And again, she's Annie. posed and straightened up. Her hands, uh, her arms placed out on front of her body, her face, eyes closed, mouth closed. Being rained upon as everything is right now, but otherwise. This one says, this one says salvage hands. Salvage hands and study. It's like they're being tacked to be taken somewhere. Where horrible things are getting done. I'll look for another body. See if I also find a foot tag on it. There's another one further down the road. You kind of be out right, of sight. Let's go bit. Okay. Another soldier. This one, uh, an older fellow, um, grizzled gray beard, uh, hair almost completely gone. Uh, helmet sitting beside him. Probably the helmet was knocked off. As you can see, the side of his of his head looks like it's been caved in. Uh, and numerous puncture marks uh, are all over his uh, chest and body. There's a, a sword there that looks like it was even bent. Uh, you're looking at the sword, and it is extraordinarily cheap. Uh, this sword was not uh, a quality weapon. It was one of those ones that's made for cheap and given out to soldiers because that's all that you can get. Um, it looks like he was, he was wounded in multiple places, from stab wounds probably. You find, once again, on uh, the, the feet of this one, another wooden tag. This one has the stamp, the burned-in uh, word, Barry, B-U-R-Y. I'll yell over to Annie. That one, this one says Barry. I don't know much about death, but it seems like someone giving orders on what to do with what corpses. Yeah, but giving who orders? Is this a cust uh, I'll yell over to Silas. Silas, what happens in this town when people die? Do they get tagged like this? Tagged? Uh, Silas looks back because he was waiting for people to move forward to the church. What do you mean tagged? Every corpse is, has been posed, and they have a tag on their foot that says, like, bury, salvage hands, study. Salvage okay. hands is certainly strange. Right. Study, too. Yeah, bury, uh, is, that, that seems normal in, in, in some cultures. Yeah, I'd assume that, I mean, I imagine bury is probably one of the standard methods. It's the Unless most common gets one. Burnt. In, in the town where it tends to get flooded they don't tend to bury people right in the town but there's a cemetery yeah. not far away the Ignians, uh, according to custom and some people prefer this are usually burned huh but this tagging is not something you're familiar with Silas so are there tags or is it written on their skin there are wooden Little tags, tags. Wooden tags? Interesting. I would go with the, the study one. Yeah, we should take one of them with us. Maybe we can find out where they're from. I haven't, uh, I'm assuming that Silas hasn't heard of anything like this being done. No. Uh, normally. Or after we go to the temple. Yeah. Hide and wait until we see what takes the corpses 
to whichever location. Yeah, probably we should probably get to the church first, though. And we'd like to check on the church, and I'd like to check on uh, your friend, Danny. Yeah, I'm worried because he's been alone. Do I still see the glow of the Temple of Ignis from where I am, or are the buildings in the way? You turn where you would be able to see down the street normally. It's it's not exactly at the end of the street. It's be down the street and a couple of blocks over to where the normal comforting glow of the Everflame, while not directly seen from here, would be seen glowing above the town. And it's dark. Damn it. All right. Yeah, let's go to the temple. It's not glowing like it normally is. And I'll walk a little faster. Okay. As you're moving along, you see some side streets that there are some guards gathering. Um, looks like they're they're recouping. You see the bodies of a few of the sea devils now uh, lying on the ground. Similarly posed, really. Um, but they're down further. One of the alleys you'd have to divert from the urgency of the temple if you wanted to check those out. If I see any tags on any corpses, I do grab them. Okay. Um, as you're around in the corner uh, along this street, there's another body uh, where this large street intersects another one. Looks like a, a young male guard who Ramirez. is... Sorry? Was it, uh, are you talking about me or Annie? Well, Annie's the one keeping an eye out for these corpses. Okay. Uh, but all three of you are there, and you'll all pass by it. Annie specifically is looking for, for corpses, especially with tags. Um, but as you, as you come around the corner and see that body, uh, you notice it right away. Uh, it's, again, that same sort of layout. This time, the, the street's a little bit muddier, um, and it looks as though there are footprints around the, the mud and the body as well. Uh, this one, uh, the the young guard, did not have a helmet, apparently, or at least there's no helmet there, it seems to be. Uh, a couple of small daggers laid out by either uh, side of the body. Another tag. And as you walk over closer to take a closer look and, and see what the tag is, you look up and notice that um, the right arm of this uh, soldier uh, is missing at the, uh, just below the, well, just below the elbow, really. So it's really the right forearm uh, is missing. It looks like it was torn off, bitten off, maybe, as there's a, a, a bloody stump that's there. Uh, otherwise, but there the, be anything around? Uh, nothing physically around you, no other people that you can see. On this one, the tag, again, burned in, so pre-made, not done out here in the water, has the word revive on it. A couple of blocks away still from the temple, but that glow you're normally used to, Medric, is not there. This is concerning. Keep Very. walking. You hustle along through the, the rain, the never-ceasing rain. Distant rumbles of thunder can be heard, but no other flashes of lightning. As you round... Uh, another turn things change these normally stolid buildings all around you made of wood give way to an apocalypse for a block around where the temple would be the buildings no longer on fire but seen to be smoking a massive wave of flame must have swept out towards them There are no visible bodies, at least in the upper, up, outer buildings that you can see. There's a lot of built up debris, as not only was fire involved, but water, wind, perhaps even lightning. You crawl over some of this debris, which fills up the road. And when you crest a bit of it, you can now see into the very center of this, the temple. What was mm -hmm. the temple? 
now seemingly nothing more than a pile of stones collapsed in on itself. No. The streets around the temple are themselves burned. The stones heated up so much that many of them seem to have been cracked and torn asunder. Wind rushing around this area still carries bits and pieces of ash, of burned building, and something else. Something that smells too much like a cooking fire. The building's stones are collapsed in on each other and are dim. No light burns from within. So I just say, no, and uh, run into the middle of it, looking for any survivors. Am I familiar with uh, Ignis using that kind of power as self-defense? There are yeah. tales. Like some kind of like red button uh, apocalypse situation. <laughs> there are tales of powerful clerics bringing the wrath of Ignis to their enemies. Generally, okay. though, it would be outward only. And this looks like power was directed to the temple itself. It's collapsed in on itself. But what surrounds it, what surrounds it is the inferno leftovers that Ignis could direct if needed. Silas, you stumble down the other side of this debris swept up by the water and the wind and even perhaps the heat waves of the fire that had been burning. It still smolders a little bit as every step reveals a little bit more of the, the uh, underside of the, the, the wood. It's almost as though it's been burned and chewed and digested partially, not from acids, but just from the sheer power of water. Make a perception check as you run downward. Nope. Okay. The The winds quickly swallow up any sounds, and there are too many shadows to see anything in particular. The building itself is is uh, was made of pure stone that's collapsed inward on itself. Um, I don't think I'll bother with the map at this point, but... Uh, it looks like a pile now. There are openings where one could sneak their way in. Yeah, I'm going to try that. Okay. Maybe I can fly, find uh, the Flamekeeper Tidewell. Medric. The odds are slim, but I mean, I might as well try. <laughs> Make a perception check as you charge forward as well. Mm -hmm. As you stumble over the, the stones and start charging towards the temple, you notice two things. Uh, sorry, actually, three things. Um, one of which is, as you're looking at the building itself, there is what looks like disturbed dirt around one section. The section kind of comes to almost a, uh, a peak point. Uh, it's small, a bit smaller than you, but you can probably force your way through. But what you notice is in the dirt below it, it looks as though someone has already pulled themselves through here in towards the interior of it. As you're kind of looking around and looking at the others, out of the corner of your eye, you notice a bit of movement out of street about half a block away at the top of one of the, the piles of debris. Someone standing there, but you can't make out any distance, any details in the distance. On the far side of this building, though, there does appear to be a large-ish figure. Um shadowed in the dim light that's here, uh, caught only partially because of the, the movement against the shiny backdrop of the wet wood and wet buildings. Uh, there appears to be a, a wagon there and a large roundish figure, large as in uh, wide and broad, um, but only standing maybe four feet tall, uh, kind of there silently standing on the opposite side. I'll go to the, I'll call out to the figure, the one near the wagon. Hey! And wave. And walk towards it. Okay. 
there's not really a response in terms of sound, but there is a tentative wave in your direction. It takes you off guard as the hand seems to come from uh, not the side of the body, but seems to come up almost from the very base of the body and wave back at you. And the hand looks enormous, out of proportion from what you're expecting. But it... I'll grab a pebble for some extra light and cast light cantrip. Okay. And I'll keep going forward, but slower. It glows, this little spark comes off of it. And it glows, you can I'm go moving forward. Behind. Where are you, Annie? I'm going to be following him closely. Okay. Make a perception check, Annie, as well. Dang. Does she have advantage because I pointed it out? Uh, I'll give you advantage because of the light as well. Twelve. Twelve? Yeah. Okay. You can easily see the figure that, that uh, Medric waved at, that's waving back at at, uh, at him. Um, it it feels all wrong. It, it The shadow that you can see, you can't make out any details at all, but it feels almost round rather than tall and thin like any being you know. Uh, and realizing it's standing beside a wagon, and it's half the width of the, the wagon, it's, it's long. Um off to that side where Medrick kind of glanced for a second, you do see a figure half hidden behind the edge of one of the partially broken buildings. But you can't make out any detail either. What is Silas doing? I'll whisper to Annie because she's right. She's close to me. There's a, there's something over there, and I'll point it out. Something's wrong. Uh... Silas is going to call out to the priestess that used to be here. I forget her name. Flamekeeper yeah, Tidewell. Tidewell. Tidewell, yeah. Uh, he'll call it the Flamekeeper Tidewell. Uh, anyone? Is there any anyone here? The sound of your voice is swallowed up by the, the winds that are blowing around you and echoes weirdly. Um, Annie, you notice that figure that was hiding partially behind the building darts down the alleyway hidden from view no answer comes to your voice silas he'll keep looking around unless something happens okay um you curve off around the side of the building um, you do notice a uh, body composed straightened up it's a little weird to see. This is one of the ones that's more like a large crab-like being. The ones you'd seen down by the dock. This one seems to have its shell somewhat cracked and burned and blackened. And across what is the equivalent of one of its feet is a small wooden tag. It says, study. Hmm. Interesting. Medric, you move forward. You're muted. Yeah, my, my computer's making that noise. I guess it's the wind swirling around the temple. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll call out to the figure. Who are you? What happened here? Still walking towards it, but slowly. Okay. The hand moves down from where it had been waving before. Um, it's a little hard to see anything still, but you get the impression that it shrugged, but stands there otherwise patiently. As you get closer and the light starts to play across it, you're greeted with something that is entirely unfamiliar and yet has that that weird familiarity to it. The idea of something which seems similar to what you know, and yet seems to violate all of what you know. It looks almost like a dwarf, but a dwarf that stands almost four and a half feet tall. So tall for a dwarf, but probably four and a half feet wide as well, 
a mound of a being, a mound of a man, as you realize when the light plays across its scarred face, his scarred face. You can see that there is no hat uh, from head to toe. You're seeing a large grayish cloak covering over this, this body that kind of carries over. Um, you see a balding head. As it turns slightly to look left and right, you notice that it has uh, hair tied in the back of its, of its face. Uh, a beard out front, which looks like it's been tied together, uh, almost knitted together, you might say. It, it uh, grimaces a little bit uh, at the bright light as you come closer. And you notice that its left eye, uh, or sorry, its right eye, is uh, larger than its left eye, significantly so, and also pale. Across the face, there seems to be a large uh, former gash, a scar that, uh, that distorts its, fig its features. The shoulders are broader than you would have expected a dwarf's to be, though. More shoulder-wide, almost like... You can't really imagine, but something like almost a warhorse type size, but broadly set, about three and a half feet or four feet wide. Large arms are attached, and you can see now that these massive hands rest upon the ground. Hands that would be the size better for a giant, almost. And the creature stands before you in front of a cart. Placid unmoving. It doesn't seem to be worried. It doesn't seem to be afraid. Just sort of and he doesn't seem hostile? It's not making any motions. Not making any threats or attacks. Can, can you speak? And the larger eye kind of blinks a little bit in the light. The smaller one opens a little bit wider. And it opens its mouth. Uh... <sighs> shakes its head no I'll nod as in I understand okay are you from here you see it think about that for a second kind of nod its head back and forth and then shrug You find another body, this time, Silas, of a, a seed uh, devil. Um, clearly has been hammered at. The side of its face is uh, bent in, its jaw broken. But once again, it's been straightly pushed into place. Another tag in the bottom this time says, Salvage. Claws. I look at its claws. They seem to be in perfect condition, not broken. Folded carefully across its uh, across its abdomen. Hmm. Okay. Well, I keep. Uh, he'll he'll just he'll look at those for a bit, but mostly he's just uh, checking the areas he can get into, just to see if there might be someone inside there uh, yelling out for them. Okay. That sort of thing. Make a survival check. Hey, 20. Okay. As you're around the back of this building, uh, you notice that there is an archway, which is partially supported. Uh, it looks like most of what has happened around it has collapsed, but the archway itself is still providing some support. The door is wedged closed, probably by some, uh, some uh, debris on the inside, but you might be able to get in this way. He'll try. He's small. Okay, make a strength check to open up the door. Hmm. Natural one. Yeah. Ow! It's, it's firmly uh, uh, pinned by some sort of stone, maybe on the other side. You feel it move a little bit, but that also might be wishful thinking at this point. Okay, I'm going to look for... Like, a, well, something I can try to pry the door open with. Okay. Length of hardwood or something. Um, we'll have you make a uh, an investigation check for that. What is Annie up to? 
21. Um, I'm going to continue uh, looking around for more tags. This is weird. Okay. Around this area, uh, as you're looking around, you do find the, the bodies of uh, a number of human guards, uh, men and women. Most of them, however, uh, are severely burned. Uh, and while they've been arranged as best they can, there's so much missing of them um, that the word bury is the predominant one over all of them. You do find another um, another uh, uh, crab-like person. Uh, this one seems to have been, uh, uh, well, for want of a better word, boiled. Uh, from uh, the amount of heat that passed over it. Its shell is scarred and blistered, and the word study is attached to its foot. Make another perception check. The word uh, seat attached to its <laughs> Eat. It is a 14. Buffet. Uh, sorry, what was the total? 14. 14. As you're looking around, um, you don't see them directly. It's one of those cases of seeing something out of the corner of your eye. But you get the impression that what, whoever was over on that other side who ran down the alleyway didn't actually leave. You get the sensation of being watched. Someone is watching over this. Um, Silas, you're looking around and you find what is a very warm piece of metal. It takes you a moment to kind of figure out what this is, and you realize it's actually one of the the uh, uh, posts on which they would hang the lamps at night. Uh, it's been yep. blown off of its off of its uh, if if its footing. It's still warm to the touch uh, and a little uncomfortable, but it should do what you need to do to get that that door. This time you can make okay. a strength check or a dexterity check, uh, actually acrobatics or athletics with advantage. Well, it's a choice of a plus one or a plus zero. <laughs> As I have no training and some pretty crappy stats. Okay. That's an 11. You manage to jam the piece of metal in the doorway and it starts to creak open. It's going to take more effort than that or someone stronger yep. to, to really get through it. But you can see uh, there is an open passageway on the other side of this door. Uh, he Then he will y uh, yell in... Uh, uh, Flamekeeper, anyone? Is there anyone in there? Hmm. Okay. And then, yeah, he'll just go back to trying. You hear a voice from inside. Um, it is a lighter timbered male voice. Uh, elegant in pronunciation, which I probably won't be able to entirely replicate. Um, let me see. The flame keeper is in here. Oh, what's left of her? Medrick? You hear a Did voice I hear that you discussion? Do, you do hear a voice from inside calling out. It's not a familiar voice. The creature in front of you stirs a little bit at the voice, looking over. Can you stay here? Looks at you, shrugs. Uh, yeah, stay here, all right? I would like to ask you more questions. And I'll walk away and go to uh, where they were talking. Uh, where, I hear, where I heard the voices come from. The voice seems to come from somewhere inside the middle of the pile. Uh, but you heard Silas call out from the sort of the, the back of the building. The same side you are on the far side from where you came in. And you can, you can see, see him where... struggling weakly trying to pry the door open. Yeah, you can see a giant piece of metal stuck in the, into a space. What was that, Annie? Annie? I see uh, Silas struggling to open a door. I'll bring the crowbar. Okay. He's already if effectively got that. a crowbar the size of a, uh, a lamp. But every time he jabs it into the door, he kind of lifts on it, and his whole feet, feet come right off the, the ground. He's simply not strong enough to move it with this. I see. I'm a tiny. I mean, the other creature looked pretty strong, so if I'm still within earshot, I'll yell over at it, and it's like, hey, can you come help us with something? 
Kind of I won't wait to see if he shows up, but if he does, he does. If he doesn't, whatever. Looks over at you, and, and instead of his head tilting, it's like his whole shoulders kind of tilt to acknowledge, and then kind of shrugs. Um, from inside the building, Silas, you hear, Yes, uh, there's no way out of here. I found a way in, but it's only slightly bigger than I am. I can't get her out. Do you have a way in? We're working on it. Don't I'll grab the crowbar and try to do what Silas was trying to do. Okay. Silas hangs on the crowbar as, uh, as Medrick just picks it up, jams it in there. Ah! Maybe. Uh, let's have a uh, athletics or acrobatics check from... I'm resisting him. Not that it matters. Uh, yeah, you're managing to open it up. It is definitely pinned on the inside by some heavy stone. And you've got a space about a foot and a half wide now. It's a little too small for you to get through, but you could make progress. Oh, yeah. I heard that. I heard that. I know where you are. Dover. Dover, help them. But at that, the large Medrick, figure, but... the large yeah. figure turns and walks in your direction. Unhurried, unconcerned, um, and looks at what you're doing. Would you care to assist Dover as he grabs onto the large lamp post? Dover is the creature guy? Seems to be. Okay. So, yeah, of course, it looks like a giant yeah. dwarf with huge hands. So, yeah, lumbering over towards you, Silas, and Annie, that you're standing there as well, you see this large figure, roundish, um, somewhat... Uh, strangely faced, large scar, scar across his face, right eye, um, larger and kind of milkier, almost looks like it was cut in two as well, um, with massive arms. In fact, as he walks forward, he kind of walks partially on his knuckles. Um, in our world, we'd understand it kind of like the way an orangutan moves, with these massive arms are as long as his body. Starts lumbering towards you. Yeah, I'll assist him. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna let go of the thing and get ready to dash in as soon as it opens up a hole big enough for me. Okay. Uh, Dover uh, walks over this giant creature whose name you presume is Dover. That's what the other voice called out for. Um, walks over, puts his, his big paws on the uh, on the metal of this lamp post. Actually, also takes the the uh, hand on. Or sorry, Medrick has the. Uh, the uh, um, crowbar, I think. Uh, even though Annie is the master of the crowbar, as we have established previously. Uh, I'm the provider of the crowbar. Let's be real here. Okay. All right. Provider. Uh, you're a service provider. That's what you are. Um, so as it, as this creature moves his massive arms, the, the lamppost which is, you know, probably a, a good inch or two around diameter wise for a large piece of metal. Looks like a toothpick as he wraps his massive fingers around it uh, and uh, gives a, a, a pull. So not rolling well today. That's my that's my thing. Thankfully, it's with advantage because other people are helping because good Lord, I can't seem to do anything today. That's kind of hilarious. Uh, hey. And there, uh, again, you've managed to already open up about a foot and a half with <laughs> Dover's help. He manages to, to wrench it open. Now a good uh, a three foot gap exists, but Dover has to hold it as does Medrick because it, it, it is a massive amount of weight on the other side. Yeah, Silas goes crawling in as fast as he can. Okay. You crawl in and you can see that uh, one of the large pillars that was one of the central core pillars of this building has basically collapsed on that side and is leaning up against the door. That's what they're holding right now, um, which is basically something that was meant to hold up the whole building. Inside, uh, the room is uh, destroyed, like a whirlwind went off in here. The far end, you can see other, other pillars which have kind of crossed and uh, are holding up the roof right now. Uh, you see a small figure, uh, a halfling, um, wearing a, a, a heavy gray robe, um, leaning over what looks like the body of the flamekeeper. 
Um, and he's pressing down with gloved hands on different parts of her body, kind of uh, examining, looking closer, um, kind of puts his hand up to the side of her face, looks into her eyes, uh, that sort of thing, moving all over her. Barely seems to notice when you come in. Dias is going to rush over and check on her, see if he can do anything. Um, as you rush up closer, you see um, the uh, rather fancily dressed beneath this, glo- this gray cloak, uh, halfling with a, a, a curved uh, uh, blonde mustache, a nice tight little uh, woven goatee, uh, curls of blonde hair underneath the cloak of this. Um, look up, a little bit of surprise. Oh, hello. Ah, I say that you found a way in. Good. And we can get her out again. Uh, as you look at uh, the flame keeper. Her body does not seem broken or damaged or hurt, but it is unmoving. You can make a medicine check if you'd like to look closer. I will try. Hey, a 20. Something Yay. you've noticed about Medric before is just being close to someone who is a servant of Ignis, someone who is that close. There is more than just body heat that's given off. There is an aura of, of strength and heat and warmth and almost comfort that comes off of them, except when Medric gets into battle and then the, the aura changes to a spikier heat, like the flames get turned up a little bit. For the enemies. <laughs> yeah, Med- Med- Medric's, uh, Medric is the hottest guy in town. <laughs> kind of, kind of. He comes spicy. As you press your hands closer to the flame keeper and kind of, touch your your her side of her face and her hand the first thing that occurs to you is the absolute absence of that heat there's no warmth here if anything it feels cold and clammy wet and um unmoving from everything that you can tell the flame keeper is dead well I point out where I came in uh, to the little guy and say, uh, the exit's up there. Um, then I'll try to uh, try to drag her out. I might be able to handle that. Uh, very well. Usually let Dover do this particular part, but she's no good to anyone in here. Now, on a three, and he grabs her, her legs, Make a uh, uh, athletics check with advantage because he's helping as much as he can. Eight. It's slow going. Uh, wow, she's she's way denser than I expected her to be. In a way, yes. There is something really bizarre about that that weight that you're feeling, though, because you grabbed her probably by the arms to try to haul her, and and again that coldness of her skin. Uh, seems to uh, move right through you. But also there's a weird feeling about her weight entirely. Uh, it's it's almost as though... She's dead weight? <laughs> more, more than that. Uh, and in fact, you, you see the other fellow uh, kind of look quizzically. You know, I think she's full of water. I think she drowned. Remarkable. Uh, well, we were fighting water elementals earlier. That would kind of make sense. Remarkable. Set her down for a moment. I've got to try something. I'm going to tip her over and try and get the water to come out. It's exactly what he was going for as well, and he kind of is glad to see you t- along the same lines. Uh, and he starts patting her on the back to try to, uh, to uh, help a little bit, and then reaches around and starts pressing in on her stomach and on her her chest and on her lungs. And uh, sure enough, in a few seconds, uh, there is a a rush of of dirty uh, water mixed with blood that pours out of her in a pool around her. There, that should make her a lot easier to move. Unless you've got another idea. This is the only way we're gonna get her out of here. You wouldn't happen to have someone stronger with you. Uh, Yes. he, he's helping hold out or hold the door open for us so we can leave. I, uh, I can try to help. Not that I'm very. Oh, geez, I pressed the wrong button. 
<laughs> she vanishes yeah. in a puff of computer smoke. I mean, that's what happened to my character sheet, so. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just slightly, slightly strong, but I, I can lift, kind of. Yeah, I, uh, I'll i yell out for anyone who can help us uh, bring her out. Crawl in. Okay, you're easily able to, to scurry through the same hole that Silas was able to. Uh, and uh, you see this rather finely quaffed uh, halfling uh, kind of looking up at you, uh, strangely sort of smiling. Hello. You look a little bit more muscled than I. Maybe you'll take this end. Uh, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> okay. I will assist Danny. All right. And he kind of moves. I hear the discussion that's going on in there. <laughs> Well, they did call out for someone stronger, and then Annie jumped in. So take that as you will. Yeah. Otherwise, the voices are kind of muted by the heavy stone all around them. While Annie's coming in, I'll uh, Silas will take a, a quick look around just to see if there's anybody else. Uh, you look quickly around you, and you see no other signs of people. Mm. Just destroyed things everywhere. Uh, make a... Let's call it an investigation check. There's a sign of the Everflame. Let me know. <laughs> Eleven. Okay. You look around and trying to kind of reconstruct what this place was. You, you've been to the temple maybe once or twice, uh, but not really in any length of time. Um, and it, it looks as though it wasn't just that the roof collapsed in on this place. A battle was, for, was, was fought here. Uh, there was uh, a, a tremendous unleashing of energy. You look over and see this large uh, piece of, of uh, stone, which normally had been gray with a little bit of, of, uh, of white flecks inside. And you recognize it as the pillar on which the Everflame had sat. But now it looks broken in three or four places, and there are large scorch marks all around it. There is no flame burning from that. A massive battle was fought here, and it looks as though the flame keeper lost. Okay. Annie, I believe you're now the lead on an athletics check with Silas uh, and this strange halfling helping you as well. So you get advantage. It's not good, guys. Uh, that is a six. And an eight. <laughs> You're moving slowly towards the door, but the the amount of, of rubble that's in here is making it very difficult because you can only make it a few inches before you have to kind of move and maneuver and reposition yourselves. More. Sorry, what was that? Can I try to do something to help more? Yeah. I would like to take my cloak off and try to roll her onto the cloak so we can carry her that way and have a bit better leverage on her. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, uh, make make a makeshift gurney with my, my cloak. All right. Uh, yeah, this is not a complicated thing. It's not something you've done before, but, you know, the idea of rolling someone up in a cloak is not hard. So, yeah, you, uh, you find... This way you kind of make it a sling, almost, uh, to make it a little easier for her to grasp, I guess. Right. Yeah, get a better hold on, on her, have a bit better leverage. This time, um, while uh, uh, the halfling will provide uh, advantage to both of you, each of you are going to roll a separate roll with advantage. Basically, this is representing that all of you are kind of working together. Well, that is a 16 now. <laughs> okay. With the other one being a 3. So. <laughs> <laughs> Silas? Five. Well, seven technically, but still not that great. Yeah. Uh, however, Annie's uh, idea gives her the leverage she needs to kind of uh, not so much carry the flame keeper out as she's proving to be a little bit more difficult to maneuver around this tight space so much as lean in the right way and keep her elevated just enough off the floor so that she's more or less falling in the right direction you need. Uh, you get her to the door and... Uh, Silas, you're the first to the door, kind of at the head, uh, kind of crawling back through. Uh, Medrick, you see uh, Silas backing out through the door. As we do, I 
look over quickly at Medrick and just kind of with a downcast expression say, she didn't make it. Damn. And then we'll start hauling her out. Okay. And sure enough, just after he but says hey, that, shield. after she says that, uh, or after he says that, not that part about the free shield, because that's completely yeah. out of character and wrong at this moment. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, you do see the 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 remarkably placid but completely emotionless, expressionless, and lifeless face of the flame keeper emerge. After a few seconds, uh, you're able, or a few minutes, really, you're able to pull. Uh, her out and set her back behind the building uh, and after which emerges this strange little halfling who stands up and kind of brushes himself off you can let that down now he says to the large creature who uh, lets go of the the uh, the uh, lamp post and the whole thing kind of collapses behind you all was there any sign of the everflame that survived no it was gone the altar is cracked and blackened. Whoever yeah. did this is going to pay. It's a terrible mess in there. And the little halfling walks over to the, the body once more. Again, Do I recognize this to... guy? Um, no, actually. Okay. Medric, she drowned. What? Yes, it seems quite Maybe clear not. now. Would you come here with that light, yeah, young man? Gesturing to Medric. It must have been more water elementals. Yeah. Well, they're no longer around, so which means they were likely killed. As anybody else in this area would have been. What happened in there? Do you know anything? Who are you asking? Uh, the halfling. He seems to be completely engaged once again, looking closer and kind of gesturing for you to move closer with your light. Yes, drowning is one of the things, at least. But there's something here, and she kind of, he kind of points to the the edges of her eyes, uh, kind mm -hmm. of opening them up a little bit, a little bit creepily as her eyes don't focus when he opens up, uh, but he does so without without any compunction or, or resistance. Um, you see how the eyes are somewhat cloudy here. This is very interesting. I would say there's more than just water going on. Terrible, terrible tragedy. Can't wait to take a look, really. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you know her? Yes, she was my mentor. Oh, terrible. I will look at the eyes, though. And can I figure out what might have happened? You can make a medicine check. I will. Whoop. Eh, 15 is passable. It's hard looking into the eyes of your mentor in this yeah. form. Yeah. Her body is cold and turning blue. Her eyes, however, are almost milky white. And you've been around um, heat enough to know the sort of effects of heat. And similar to heat, but not the same, not under the same domain, is the power of lightning. And you get this weird feeling that kind of turns your stomach for a little bit because you sort of look again at different soft tissues and around her, 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 her body. And you get this disturbed feeling that she essentially was boiled. That electricity ran through her body the same time she drowned. And her eyes have boiled to solid. No longer the semi-liquid form they were before. And it's hard to stare at this. For you, the short halfling beside you, he's sort of standing there with one hand uh, propping up his chin, kind of going, hmm, that's most peculiar. I've never seen anything quite like this. I'll explain my findings, basically, in a very abrupt manner. Not abrupt, but like a uh, stop-talking manner. <laughs> hmm. And then I'll close her eyes gently. Well, then. Uh, out of respect, then, uh, I will take your guidance as, as writ. He reaches into a pocket and pulls out a handful of small uh, wooden tags, flips through them, and hangs one on her toe. There. Wait, what? Were you the one putting the tags on every single corpse out here right now? Like... Well, of course. Forgive me. 
hello, I don't think we've properly met. Uh, my name is Dr. Phineas Marigold. I am um, a researcher of sorts into the states of living and death. And he extends his hand to Annie first. I don't shake it. Ah, to Medrick. I'll shake it cautiously. Like He shakes it warmly. Because I heard the name before. And uh, extends his hand towards Silas as well. Silas will avoid him and say, uh, and is uh, trying to read what's on the tag. <laughs> uh, it, it says Barry. Now, do you work for the town? Yes, I've just recently moved into the position. It's quite lucrative. What position? Oh, I shouldn't say lucrative in these circumstances. I do apologize. I sometimes lose myself in my professional interests. You see, among other services I provide to the town is the disposal of those who passed. With the proviso, of course, uh, that if I need to, I can make a study of them, of course. Terrible tragedy was happened here, of course. I wouldn't wish this upon anyone, but I will say it's a and bit of an opportunity. Someone's hands. Sorry, can you repeat that? And why would you salvage someone's hands? Well, if they're, or perfect, other parts. if they're perfectly good hands, then someone could probably use them. Or at least I can try to see if someone can use them. Still working out some of the details on that part in particular, but you know how it is. Things need to be tried before you know if they work or not. So uh, Dover here, and I'll point at the creature next to him. Is he put together from different salvaged body parts? Well, yes, you could say so. He's been recovered and saved a number of times. Sometimes life is very harsh to people. And it's been my absolute pleasure. And he walks over to Delver and looks at him fondly. My absolute pleasure to help my friend here. As much as I've been able to. Still working out a few details. And he kind of reaches up uh, and uh, sort of affectionately scratches uh, the, the tied-up beard around uh, Delver's face, who... You hear this sound from within, this sort of deep rumbling, and then it kind of emerges as the, the, the rumbling grows a little stronger, and then out of the mouth you realize it's kind of like a rough laugh, almost. Still. Is he alive or dead? Well, that's just that's sort of a matter of opinion, really. It's something I'm researching to try to figure out exactly what state all of us are in, to be honest. I mean, can you say you're alive or dead? I mean, maybe you think you are, but is that really the state you're in? Uh, anyway, uh, back to the flamekeeper's body. Oh yes. All right. I can't just say I'll grab a sharpie. Um, I'll grab I'll grab a writing instrument and write on the tag. I'll cross out Barry and I'll write burn. I I kind of get the feeling that you don't really have anything to write with. Yes. But you you kind of evoke a little bit of the flame in your finger. You really just have to change the last letter. <laughs> yes. If it's if it's the equivalent of English, sure. Uh, but yeah, I kind of I kind of get this finger this feeling, and you can veto this if you like. But I get this feeling you evoke just a little bit of the flame, and I'll say take one point of damage. Uh, produce flame cantrip. Yeah, actually, you have the produce flame cantrip. So you don't need yeah. to to worry about that. Uh, and then just kind of cross out the last uh, the last sigil on the on the thing. Oh, I see. It is the way of Ignis terribly sorry. I wasn't familiar so much with your costume. Still trying to understand all of them. Oh dear, is that supposed to happen? And he points towards the body. And what? steam seems to be rising off the body. Is that normal? Yes. You see... I'm assuming in... for like higher level flame keepers, like note to the DM, that that is normal? No idea. You've never seen a higher level flame keeper pass away. Okay. Um... But it's not entirely unsurprising, I suppose. Yeah. I'll um, just nod. Marigold is, is kind of caught, you seem, between going closer to see what's happening, but also being a little bit cautious of not really knowing what's happening. Within a second, <laughs> flames start licking up across the body. I say, this is remarkable. And you see him pull out a... a, uh, a book, which he kind of shields with his cloak and starts to write notes in this leather-bound journal. This is what it was Sorry? 
Nice spell, Medric. Uh, is there something we should say? Let me check my notes. <laughs> I know there was a saying for this. I'll just be quiet for now. Okay. The flames build over a few seconds and then suddenly burst upward, leaving the body unburned, leaving the body unconsumed. But a, a ball of flame erupts and rises over the body and then takes on a vaguely humanoid cross shape. The voice of the flame keeper emerges from somewhere within this flame. I'm sorry, Medric. I'm so sorry. What happened? I couldn't hold them back. I tried. There was too many of them. Too strong. I'm sure you took several of them down with you. Did the power of Ignis wipe out this entire city block? Yes. I hope there were none who were innocent caught within, but I could not hold it any closer. You did what you could. I, I did. feel like I should have been there. You had things to do. Promise me, and the ball-shaped person moves closer to you, Medric, and you can feel the heat waves emanating from it. The rain mm -hmm. is not coming within a foot overhead as it melts away to steam before coming closer. The rest of you can feel this heat. Marigold steps back another step when he notices his page is starting to steam slightly from being so close. I've seen only sea devils and crab warriors, so I, I don't think many innocents were slain in the process. It is dangerous when war is fought. <laughs> yep. I knew it. I will not be burning long. Promise me that you will not let grief turn to madness. You are flame, but you must not be the wildfire. I promise. Who yeah. sent these creatures? A great darkness grows. There is a void. Ignis grieves. And it will be darker still before the light fully returns. Darkness grows stronger here, and this town will need the light. Your light. I'll take out the uh, darkened sunstone or starstone and hold it up in front of her. Can this be powered up again with the light of Ignis? It can serve you, but its its link is mostly gone. It can show light. How much more? The Everflame here has been put out. There are those who know. The Church of Massilia knows. They will Make not sure. come. The Church of Massilia knows. But they will not come. They cannot. Until the darkness is defeated. I can see a little of what is to come. You will have allies. Some of them will be unexpected, dangerous. And you notice she kind of glances a little bit towards Silas. 
at that point. Silas is about to wave when she does that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And I'll point to the halfling and this one. Me? Well, I'm perfectly innocent. <laughs> <laughs> you shush me. You might have future allies. This guy? I'm perfectly innocent. <laughs> <laughs> what does a flamekeeper say about him, though? <laughs> he serves his role. As do he. You will need to choose whether to destroy the darkness or to guard the flame. But you cannot do both. There will be times, I think, where I can reach to you to offer you some words of guidance. But there are other beings here, nearby, all around you, who can provide you with wisdom, should you seek it. Nod. I am never far. I am in every burning torch, in every flicker of candle. At that point, you realize these particular words are one of the one of the words of a prayer of Ignis, not to Ignis, but of Ignis reaching to his followers, and she's recited them, and they mean, hopefully, as much now as anything. I am in every heart. And in every sunrise, I am in hope and in vengeance. I am in strength and passion. I will burn forever in you and for the world. Now, I have some duties to perform. Fare thee well, Medric. No, Farewell. It's kind of nods to you, nods to Annie. There's a, a look. Silas just tries not to be noticed. <laughs> she picks she, she you out <laughs> as, <already if>, <laughs> as if she can see easily in the dark for some reason, being fire. Um, picks you out, and there isn't a nod. Is as such, but there is a moment of, of kind of acknowledgement, <laughs> sort of, sort of, yeah. Um, and then the body backs up, and like a a candle being blown out, the flame is suddenly whoo, gone. The rain comes back down, raining as heavy as it was before, but now you realize no longer being held off of you, Medric, by the sheer force of the flame keeper. I just kind of stare into the distance for a few seconds. Annie, we need to find your friend. We do. Medrick, we we have we should go check on him. Is her body still there? It is. Do you want me to okay, do I'll... something with I mean, it doesn't seem like it's needed much anymore. I can Take care of her. No, I'll do that. Thanks, though. And I'll set up, like, according to how the rites of Ignis, like, says how burials or burnings have to go, like, for... It's like cremation, but... Ritual of funeral rites of Ignis, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Words. I mean... I'm not good at words. It, it probably involves uh, going to some of the, the broken buildings that are nearby to gather some of the wood. Yeah. Um, we might have to wait till after the rain's done, though, for the actual ceremony. We can probably deal with this later, though. All right. Um, Dr. I, would say, I would say, if nothing else, wait until everything is over before actually doing anything. I'm sure that the families of the people 
would like to know and would like to have a say in what you do with their their loved ones. Oh, I have a perfect arrangement with the town. No worries. Yes, but not with the families of the people. Oh, I'll be in touch. It's part of the service. I'm going to take my... Uh take a blanket out of my pack and I'll drape it over the flame keeper weigh it down with some rocks I'll okay. take the tag off do not touch this one as you wish uh, yeah, we have to go the Silas will start heading off towards the other end of town I guess because we don't know exactly where he was but before I leave, I'll ask uh, Dr. Marigold, have you seen, and I'll give him uh, the description of uh, Gaetano running around? Well, let me think. I don't think I have. Dover, oh. have you noticed this fellow around somewhere? Dover kind of looks at him, looks at you, shrugs, and then lifts one of his arms and points towards one of the broken buildings. Ah, I think he's over there. Thanks. Good luck to you. He calls to you. Thanks. Afterwards. We'll probably see you again sometime. And uh, remember, don't touch that one. Delightful. And of course not. You head off in the direction that Dover pointed? Yep. Yep. This building is three quarters destroyed. It looks as though the, a wave of fire and water and air and who knows what else swept outward from the center, engulfed it, and just sort of crushed and shredded it. But as you move in that direction, you look in towards the part that was not cut by the fire and by the wind and by the water, and you notice a, a hole through a window that's been broken on the opposite side of the building. Uh, and as you pass on through that, you find collapsed into a heap a very unconscious Gaetano piled kind of against the fort of the fall of the far wall. Okay, I'm going to check on him. As soon as I see him, I'll run over. It's a little hard to get across all of the, all the, the broken wood and pile that's there, but you, you climb on over and the first point when you put your finger to his throat, you realize he's soaking wet. I mean, the rain is heavy, but it feels almost cold and clammy. Make your medicine check, though. Wow. Okay. Hey, I'm is good it... with the medicine checks. I should try getting training in it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should. Uh, as you uh, you kind of do that, and you, you realize that there are a lot of puncture wounds, there's stab wounds, there's scratches all over his body. Uh, he's not carrying a weapon. You can see that both of his hands are are are, uh, are scarred up, uh, and as you're kind of looking him over, uh, he coughs, turns his head, and spits out some water. I feel terrible. Damn. Oh, Let me you're start. not the only one. I think he's okay. Ooh, that's good. Kind of rolls. I over. Kind of beside him because I'm like at five hit points and just ran five blocks. <laughs> uh -huh. He looks up at uh, first at, at Silas, who's right beside him. Ah, it's good to see you again. Ah, my lady, I'm glad to see you're not dead, but <laughs> you don't look great. No, don't feel great either. Uh, uh, Medrick, good to see you. Uh, you too. Does, does this mean you won? What happened here? That was a hell of a fight. There was a. I saw one of them heading off in this direction. Giant guy, four arms, massive. He's their general, I believe. Uh, that makes sense. Don't happen to know his name, do you? I don't think I got him, so I might have to find him again. Anyway, they were assaulting the temple. Uh, judge by your look, that's that's not still standing, is it, Medric? No. I'm sorry, kid. I did what I could. Uh, I managed to waylay some of them. Some of the guards were around, but they didn't last too long against those big uh, crab-like guys. Yeah, managed... they, they had overall in general. Yeah. 
Sorry to hear that, too. Anyway, I uh, tried to get in the middle of all of this. There was this um, this water thing. <laughs> you know, I kind of wish they had faces, because I would have liked to have seen this fa look on his face when he tried to drown me. <laughs> Doesn't work. Took care of that a long time ago. And he kind of scratches his, uh, his kind of cut-up shirt, pulls it back a little bit, and you can see a tattoo uh, just below his, his shoulder blade of a little anchor that's there. Got to get me. Flipping the bird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, while I was caught up in that thing, at least I didn't drown, but I couldn't really get out of the thing for a while. And the forearm guy had this horn. The strangest thing I ever seen. The whole temple was engulfed in flame and they couldn't get anywhere near it. He took a bite of this thing he had in his belt. It looked like a clam. Anyway, he walked through the fire as if it didn't hurt him anymore, which I think was probably not good. Didn't see him again, but then I heard that blasting horn. And, well, didn't lightning jump out of the sky. Struck the building repeatedly. That's when everything kind of exploded and I ended up here. I kind of hoped that meant that he was dead and that all those other things were dead too, but something tells me, something tells me they hit the temple. I don't think we saw him, but we did find the flame keeper. Uh, looks at Medrick. She, she didn't. I'm sorry, kid. Her spirit survives, but it is a big blow to lose her and the temple and the Everflame. Yeah. And all we can do is fight back. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what this is all for. These sea devils have fought before, but this was big. It's like they had more on their side or, or something. More reason. I don't I don't know exactly. It just doesn't make sense. Well maybe it does. Silence is in the background in this scene. <laughs> Maybe it does a little bit anyway. As the flamekeeper's soul left her body, she made a mention of a darkness growing in this city. We've been exposed to it previously. Like on our first job together, out to a farmhouse. It's definitely getting stronger. Well, that's uh... not good. The sea devils. I found I when I checked them, they had this black ichor on them. That was very similar to the the strange creature she had around the the uh, sunstone. That may be some aspect of this darkness that your mentor was talking about. Yatano kind of. Uh, pulls up his his uh, his fist and kind of spits off it, uh, spits on it, and you can see him rubbing away at the the sort of shards and other things that have been stuck into his fists. Yeah, I noticed that too. Every time I kept punching the damn things, they slipped away on me. That stuff's not normal. I've fought sea devils before. Small packs, they come on a ship, they try to take it over, try to drown everybody on board. That's kind of normal. And they're not normal. No. Now, the ones we've seen recently have had acid and whatever this black stuff is, it seems to be alive, at least the stuff she had on the sunstone. The sunstone is powerless now also. Well, ain't that a kick in the teeth? It's about the fourth kick in the teeth today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, kid. Look, uh... Well, we saved some lives. Their intent was to destroy the town. So we've saved quite a few. We can at least count that as a positive. So they're gone now? You haven't seen any more? No. No, not after uh, the priestess left on her giant tortoise. Kind of stands Turtle. up and... Giant sea turtle puts his hand on his on his uh, brow and looks up. 
I wonder when this storm is going to be over then. Did you see any of the Sea Devils looting or just killing? I mean, all I saw was fighting, kid. I don't know if there's anything afterwards. I caught one of them trying to make off with this vase, and I'll show him the vase. Huh. Yeah, it, it had it carefully wrapped up in the rug. And he kind of reaches out and taps it with one hairy knuckle. Seems kind of cheap to me. What's it all about, kid? I don't know. I was hoping I could... The doctor might know. Maybe. Doctor. He's, he seems just really strange. He does. I'm not sure I can get behind his use of taking body parts from corpses and reusing them for his abominations, but his abomination did prove useful. I think it's up to the family to decide, but uh, can I take a look at that? The base? Yeah, sure. And I'll pass it to Silas. As I try uh, to adjust the lighting in this room. Silas is trained in Arcana, so he's going to try and see if there's any specially magical about any of this. Okay. Make an Arcana check. Ow. It's probably because you're getting distracted by the heavy rain and the constant wind, but it's hard to and tell the two out points. here. Yeah. And, the you know, having to hold in your inner organs with hope and staples. But yeah, there doesn't see anything about this, this vase. At least not here, not now. Well, look, we might want to. We should check. Hold scene. on to it for now to see if we can figure it out. But it might have just been a looter. They weren't here to loot, though. Or at least I, it felt like they were just here to destroy the town. Mm, yeah, but there's always there's always people in every group that are just out to destroy and steal. But yeah, we should see if we can find out anything more about it. Uh, he looks up and out towards the bay. You see him raising his hand once more. Yeah, Silas is going to take a look and see. Uh, yeah, this, I mean, this storm is unnaturally strong, but we thought when we get rid of the sunstone and the priestess that it would end. I just hope my ship is all right. The ship. When last we saw it was struggling. The ship is all right. As he tries the Errant Widow, uh, there was... I ran into a girl. She was a part of a caravan that was supposed to pick up supplies from that ship. Anyway, she's the only surviving member of that caravan. Well, I'll have to talk to her. Maybe I can help. I did let her know to make contact with you, or with the ship. She's probably at the end right now, or at the at the bar, and I'll tell him like what the bar's name was. Okay. Uh, Any the sudden, the sudden draft, let's call it that. <laughs> Everybody who was in that alleyway when when the attack happened kind of herded everyone into the bar after we had secured the alleyway. All right. Well, I don't know about you kids, but. As much as I'd like to get some sleep, I think there's some work to be done. Yeah, I think... I'd love to have a rest, but... Anyone have any bandages? I'm all out. And so is Agnes. <laughs> For today, anyway. I didn't run out of much more than my shorts, but... I know a few places. Come with me. I'll get you set up. If we're passing by where the doctor is doing his, like, collecting. As you pass back through the, the area of the temple, you don't mm -hmm. see him, the cart, or Dover. Okay. But the body of the Flame Keeper is undisturbed. You also okay. don't notice the bodies yeah. of the crab-like creature or the two sea devils. They are not there anymore. I wonder what kind of 
animal human mishmash he's gonna come with come up with next hmm. we're gonna move into I a little do. bit of fast tracking unless there's something specific yeah. in this moment really fast tracking holy shit this is me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can assume that you recover for that night Gitano actually takes you back to the place where he's staying uh, and he's got several things uh, piled up there lots of bandages uh, a couple of, of, uh, of drafts of healing as well um, but you're not dying at the moment so at least that doesn't seem as, as, as crucial um, I don't know. If I stub my toe twice, I'm unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> he slaps you hardly on the back and you die. Um, yep. I have a few more than that, but still. <laughs> if I uh, hit my head on the low door frame, it's like bang. Yep. So we're going to fast track about a couple of weeks here. Okay. So did the storm stop eventually? That's one of the things that I will note that the storm did not stop. In fact, one of the most disturbing things over the next two weeks is that you do not see the sun rise or set. The storm clouds are so thick that only a slight change in the light from day to night seems to happen. Over those next couple of weeks, you come to learn that it is only in the bay that this storm is so thick. Out beyond where, for example, the Winthrop Farm is, the storm winds are still a little strong because they're coming off the edge but not actually affecting them, and they're still having normal sun, sun and, and light. It extends almost as far as the uh, Dead Man's Fingers, uh, and that the, the lighthouse there, which is still providing feeble light with what Jonas was able to make up, um, it's, it itself is unaffected, but the light does swing in towards the bay, providing a small amount of illumination from what he's able to produce uh, to guide some ships back in. It does not stop raining either, during those two weeks and the streets continue to get muddier and muddier and people's moods start to drop somewhat as well the bodies are all picked up you're not sure who checked with what but they don't seem to be there a day later the captain reports that they lost a lot of the guard even the guard has supplemented both by the recent extension uh, from the soldiers who had been brought into the town, as well as the Baron's own private guard. Uh, they are still quite devastated. And so the call goes out once more. Nothing seems Did to the happen. the taxes increased? Uh, well, the taxes are suspended for the moment. The collector doesn't seem to come around again, at least not for those two weeks. <laughs> uh, nothing else seems to threaten the town or be destroyed. But there's a steady decline. During that decline, however, all of you go up a level. Which I believe is level five. Five now? Yeah. Wow. Level five. So I'll have a couple of adjustments for Medric as well. Cool. Uh, for the the uh, the Kmar path. Uh, and uh, yeah, unless there's something specifically <laughs> what? Sorry. Fireball time. Ah, uh, yes, that's a very important thing for a rogue, especially. Um, but unless there's something specific you'd like to talk about right now, that we mm -hmm. have over the. Chance. I get a few. <laughs> okay, let's try to keep them brief because I don't want to take the, too much longer. One really quick one. Yep. Okay. Because I'm assuming Silas would have tried to identify the uh, or do an arcana check on the base a few more times after the first night. Uh, I mean, if asked to, he will, but he already checked once and didn't find anything. So, um, Do any of you talk to any of the other people in town about that? What, the base? Yeah. Yeah, I will bring it up to the Dr. Uh, Marigold. Okay. Um, make an insight check. Okay. Nice. He tells you directly. Mm -hmm. Doesn't deal in vases, or vases, as he calls them. Um, doesn't ring a bell. It's just a vase, as far as I know. 
But there's a curious back expression that you kind of pick up on, which is sort of fear, but it doesn't explain. Um, okay. It's more picked up in the idea that normally where he's disturbingly cheery and happy, for a second there, he's not. And then he goes back to his normal self. All right, I'm definitely keeping this for further investigation. I, I say that to my mind. Like, I don't say it out loud. It's like, all right, well, thanks. Okay. Do you talk to anybody else about it? I'm not sure who I could bring it up with. Uh, I'd have to look at the list of NPCs, and we don't have time for that right now. <laughs> I mean, it was a, a, a break and enter. You might bring it up with the captain, or you might bring it up with... I mean, you can go see the Baron. That might not be as fruitful as you would hope, but... Um, could go see the owner. <laughs> the owner's dead. <laughs> Unless. Shit. Okay. Do we level up after the few weeks or before the few weeks have gone by? <laughs> Let's say after. <laughs> Crap. Okay. Um, in that case, I will ask Dr. Marigold. Um, the body that was at this address, and I'll show him the paper I had, like, or I had the address in my mind. Anyway. Your GPS, yes. Yeah, internal GPS. Uh, I'll ask him if he still has access to that body. Uh, no one's come to claim it, so yes. All right, make sure you preserve it. I have to ask it some questions. Oh my. And I'll cast speak with dead on it next session. Okay. All right. Because I'm level five now. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else does Silas have? Okay. Uh, one, the clouds, you said they're around the bay. Does that extend as far as the Baron's Castle? Uh, it is to the base of the Baron's Castle, and the storm itself doesn't seem to be strong over the castle, but the clouds are thick, lending it a sort of permanent mist. Okay. Uh, how about the the uh, lighthouse? The uh, place again, where we're it didn't return the stuff to. It didn't extend to the lighthouse, but the lighthouse's light would light into where the clouds are thick. Okay. Uh, do we want to return the sunstone to the lighthouse like we said we were going to? I probably okay. would. I would. Uh, Flamekeeper said it might be useful to me at some point. And it's not useful to the lighthouse at this point. <laughs> they might that be is... how to figure out how to rekindle it. Yeah. Uh, Marie, what, what did you say? You're, you cut out. That, that, that is true. That's what I say. I will, like, go show, like, at some point I figure I'd, like, walk over there and it's, like, show him the stone and it's, like, yeah, I, I'll try to restore this, but right now it's useless. <laughs> Okay. Jonas just so, is, he, so they know, like, we haven't just, like, taken the stone. Sure. Jonas is very excited to see it, um, very curious about its current state, uh, asks if he, if you would bring it up to the, the top of the lighthouse. Sure. Uh, and there he very gingerly picks away at it with a small hammer, and there's a crack, and a small ember of burning stone is at the center. I, I can work with this. I can I can brighten this. Really? With the umbilic in place, I, I can focus it much, much better. It it won't have the same strength as it did before, not by far. It, it probably won't be the same kind of beacon, and it won't keep a lot of the things that we had worried about potentially building up, but it will be a strong light. I understand. Stronger than what you can do? Oh, far stronger than I can do with oil. And also, I mean, the oil is difficult to maintain. We don't have a lot of funds, and the town doesn't have a large allotment. And it's more likely more dangerous, too. I can mitigate most of the most severe burns. Well, if you can make use of it. Thank you. I really do appreciate this, and I'm sorry about your loss. I was hoping to go meet the flame keeper, but I guess that's not possible now. She's still around, just not in this realm anymore. 
And he kind of smiles and pats you on the shoulder. That's a nice way to think about it. He places the small burning ember inside the the uh, embellic and gets your your assistance because it is, I remember, a very heavy thing. It kind of needs to be put into place. Uh, and when he gets it up there and kind of uh, disconnects the oil, brings down the flame that is there. Okay. This is the hard part. And he starts to run his finger over the outside of the umbelic with all of its different spines and uh, protrusions and traces uh, runic symbols on the outside. They're already embedded there, but now he seems to be investing them with some, some attention. And slowly, a little light builds up on the inside and then focuses on one of the, the pillars and a bright light spews out from that side right out through the mirrored or the uh, glass uh, with the mirrors helping to focus a little bit as well. And Jonas lets out a, a whoop of, of celebration. I, I did it. It's going to work. It's not as bright as it was before, but it's a lot safer. So there's that. I'll explain to him um, what the shadowy thing in the sea devils, how they had weaponized it. Well, that's terrible. It's like they had a living version of my embellic. That's weird. I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah, like, do the same thing in case the sea devils attacked again. I mean, it wasn't really built for that. And with the star stone so diminished, it doesn't really have the power for much more than light. But theoretically, if I had a fully powered star stone, I could do something like that. With the way it was before... It was unfocused, and it kind of spread its light and its power out. What we were actually trying to do most of the time is just trying to keep it under wraps, keep it from, well, burning the top of the lighthouse, really. But the embellic's design should enable it to be able to be focused, even with that amount of power, and contained as well. But, you know, I haven't heard of another star stone. I've never seen anything like it. If I can find a way to, to repower it... I'll let you know. I'd appreciate that. Until then, it'll be safe here. The umbelic is sealed now, powered by its own, well, its own strength, really. It can't be taken out of that without, well, a lot of damage to whoever tries it. Or, in my case, with a lot of training to make sure that I do it safely. So it should be safe here now. Even if they took the tower, it still would keep glowing away. They're going to take the tower, are they? He suddenly looks very nervous. Not that I know of. Well, let, let's just hope that they aren't going to try it this time. Besides, I agree. They got what they wanted, didn't they? Didn't they? I, a lot of them died. That's good enough for me. Oh. All right. We'll bring that scene to a close. Was there something else, uh, Silas? Yep. Uh, one, uh, we found a ring and a pearl necklace. All right. Uh, Silas would check those out. Gosh, now you have to remind me where that was found. <laughs> it was found on the dock. Trapper gets unsummoned. Does he just turn back into a ball and I pick it up again? Or uh, Yes, essentially. Okay. Uh, that was stuff that was grabbed. Uh, no, that was, uh, Graveler came up with it alongside yeah. the, uh, the, the sunstone when he grabbed it out of the water. If you don't have it now, that's fine. I, that's I don't, I'd have to go looking for it, so I don't have that right in front of me. Yep. I will write it down, though. Uh, next thing is, uh, the next, he would have gone back. Uh, how did the clan make out? Uh, they seem to be fine. Some of them were hurt, but not terribly badly hurt. Okay. Uh, I And I imagine that the, the storm continues over the clan uh, house area. Nope. The clan is safely concealed on the other side of the cliff. Okay. And so they're actually fine from it. In fact, over those next two weeks, the clan's revenue from the water does not slow at all. Their boats are not bothered by the choppy water at all. They seem to be doing really, really well, in fact. And that's causing a bit of rumor that they might have had something to do with this. Wow. Right, just gotta be, you just gotta follow the right leader. Um, and the last 
thing uh, right now, I do have something for later, but uh, is uh, he would go visit Mr. Marigold uh, at one point. Uh, and he wants to know where Mr. Marigold got his training. You actually would run into to Dr. Marigold. I mean, you can go looking for his shop. He has a small, he has a small uh, uh, space where he sells potions. But um, you actually would have run into him more likely once he discovered the three bells, because he seems to have taken a shine to Sandy Bell, who seems to be <laughs> shining right back. Um, and cool. he's more or less an open book. He he talks quite happily about the training he received in Pitajune, how he worked for years. Uh, to try to discover more of the, the, the chemical secrets of life uh, and how he's quite happy to not be in Pitajun anymore because of some certain academic disputes. I ask him if... Uh, basically, uh, Sadas is trying to figure out, is he just someone who makes potions, i.e. an alchemist, or is he a magic user? Um like basically, is he a wizard necromancer or is he an alchemist uh, who does revivification potion experiments? On the surface, it's impossible to tell the difference. And to him, it doesn't sound like it's any different at all to him. Um, he does not look upon wizards very strongly, but he respects the power that they have. He knows that he looks into things in ways that no one else seems to be aware of but he kind of looks upon it as a scientific exploration. Yeah, but he's not someone who casts spells on a regular basis. You've never seen him person. do that? Nope. Well, I tell that uh, one, as long as he's getting permission from the families for the things he does, I don't think there's a, pr a big problem with it, although I may not be that well liked by the town, despite the fact that I saved several people. Um, Don't you worry about that. I've got my arrangements all in place. But um, I would be perhaps, uh, perhaps is it, you you have uh, the bodies of several shelled creatures that were there. I pull out my my masterwork shield and say, "I have an idea." <laughs> okay. Uh, and we can leave that for later. Uh, and to let you know just for later, uh, Silas does want to find out who the cult believes its enemies are, the people that they perhaps were going to strike at or whatever during the attack. Uh, once he has more time, he will try to talk with his aunt and uncle and his parents and figure out, uh, or just, basically just to ask them, uh, who it is they believe their enemies are. Um, and he does at some point want to go see Catherine again to yeah. ask her questions. Uh, sure. But that this... likely would best be till left till after yeah. uh, the uh, or after the uh, the period. Uh, that is basically it. Okay. Is there anything for Annie to do specifically right now? Not, there's nothing in particular that she would be doing. Uh, do you she hold would on definitely... to the dagger? Hmm? Do you hold on to the oh, dagger? Oh, I, I would return the dagger. So when you go to return the dagger, Captain Varendel mm -hmm. smiles. Keep it. I think you're going to get more use out of it for now. I may need it back in the future, but consider it alone. Fair enough. Appreciate it. It was very useful. Good. Enjoy your advice, he says, with a small little humor that he has. Uh, and yeah, she doesn't have much that she would do. She would write up, like, uh, another entry in her journal, uh, which will read a lot more like a report. Okay. What we'll do is we'll have a summary at the beginning of next session of a few more things to mention about what's happened over the last couple of weeks. If you do have something else that you want to do as a scene right then, we can do it. Uh, and then we will pick up uh, again with the storm still raging over Aelvater. But that'll be it for tonight, folks. Thank you very much to my players for playing through 
a rough session. I mean, it had near-death battle at the beginning, then yeah. yep. post-death battle, I guess, at the end. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, then we'll have a little bit more. But uh, congratulations on, on getting level five. That means you guys are important now. And all <laughs> kinds of things will be coming your way in terms of things you get got to get done. Sort of. <laughs> Thanks to all of you who are watching, whether you watched live on twitch.tv slash ENCAF and the number one uh, on Sundays. Uh, we starting, I think, 2.30 p.m. Atlantic time is going to be our regular start for a while. I say that, but we'll change it in two weeks, but that's okay. Nonetheless, on uh, YouTube, usually by Monday night, depending on how much time and processing I have to do, the episodes will go up on YouTube at youtube.com slash ENCAF1. You'll find the uh, a couple of playlists there. There's Legends of Omatia playlist, which is all the episodes we've done up to this point for both series. There's Legends of the Drowned Isles. And there's The Great Confusion, L-O-T-D-I, The Great Confusion. So you can you know, just check out the new episodes. That's it for this week. Uh, go to facebook.com slash L-O-T-D-I as well. You can join the conversation there and ask I don't know. What the hell were you thinking? I guess that'd be great. I, 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 I like that question. Uh, and there's more. I think I have it in the end credits uh, as well. So have a great day. Thanks, guys, for playing. And we'll see you all next week.